Okay, you are all set to go, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the November 5th special meeting of the South Glengarry Council. Moved by Martin Lang, second by Sam McDonnell, be it resolved that the November 5th special council meeting of the Township of South Glengarry now be opened at 9.30 a.m. All those in favor of the motion? Motion is carried, thank you very much. Uh, approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, uh, deletions or amendments? Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, there are no revisions to the agenda today. Perfect. Moved by Sam McDonnell, second by Stephanie Jaworski, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of South Glengarry approve the agenda as circulated. All those in favor of the motion? Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, item number three, are there any declarations of culinary interest? Seeing none. All righty, opening remarks. Uh, Mr. CAO, I'll let you uh, start. And uh, when you're done, I'll, uh, if that's all right, or would you prefer me to go first? You, you can uh, go first, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, thank you very much. So uh, welcome everyone to this year's uh, start of our budget uh, season. Um, COVID has continued on throughout 2021 and, and we believe that it will continue in some form uh, going into 2022. Our, uh, our, our council has been working very hard to, to uh, find ways to navigate through this. And uh, as you'll see, as we go through today, um, we've been thinking outside of the box and I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited uh, for what the future holds for our municipality. And, and I wanna thank my council colleagues for, for the extra work that they've been doing uh, outside of uh, you know, this council uh, at the committee level. So uh, thank you for that and uh, look forward to today's uh, proceedings. Go ahead, Mr. CAO. Hey, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Good, uh, good morning, council, staff, and members of the public. We're gonna start off with our first budget meeting, giving an overview of the budget uh, on a macro view. There are administrative requests for additions, and the big part of the meeting is going to be discussing the Roads Committee recommendations. Uh, Arguably half of our budget is related to roads and infrastructure, and we need to get to some decisions today to prepare expectations for the second budget meeting, which will be more typical on November 19th. I wanna start by thanking Treasurer McDonald and the general managers for all of the hard work on the budget and for keeping to budget in 2021. A reminder to council that we had a tax decrease in 2021, taking into consideration uh, many different factors, but especially what the pandemic was, how, how challenging it was for our businesses and people in our community. We had a staffing reorganization. Uh, we've had a number of challenges, but we've met the opportunities that they presented by bringing on a number of staff and reorganizing things internally. So if we can just go to the next slide, a couple of housekeeping items for media, the general public, you can visit our website to get a copy of the detailed budget if you want to see the background. Uh, keeping your cell phones off, that's for, for staff and council and the contact uh, numbers are there for uh, both myself and the general managers who oversee the, the budgets. We tried to bring some innovation into this to our community and, and uh, that's certainly a part of our vision and we're committed to efficient delivery of municipal services and we've done extremely well over time with our reserves. We have healthy reserves and we continue to try to uh, meet the needs of the community and residents with a, a balanced budget with healthy reserves. Our strategic goals are there, economic growth and prosperity You'll see a big part of this budget is investing in infrastructure and the sustainability of that. And uh, I'll let Treasurer McDonald get into that more deeply. I already mentioned the reorganization and the efficiencies we're trying to, to bring in and have brought into the organization with staffing, uh, technology and digitization of, of many things, improving the quality of life in our community. And we definitely have seen an improvement in our internal and external communications. 
So now I'll turn it over to Treasurer McDonald. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. And um, through you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor Gordon. So the public announcement is road maintenance is a priority. Uh, Mr. Mills already mentioned that. Uh, we have strong reserve positions. Um, we're in a positive fiscal 2021 position projected. Uh, so we won't, uh, we did have a large sale of land, but we had a few staff reports uh, that will use some of that money, but uh, we still anticipate that 2021 will be uh, not quite like 2020, uh, but there will be a positive position uh, at the end of the year. And then there's consideration for debt for roads and capital projects. We'll get a little bit more into that later, but that is a, a new venture for this township. So the Canadian economy, just briefly, it seems last year we saw that at budget time, 60% of, um, as they would say, um, service work hadn't recovered by the time we had uh, our meeting. It seems like it's recovering, but their unemployment does still remain high. And then there are supply chain disruptions um, at higher energy prices leading to inflation across the board. And then what's a budget meeting in 2019, 2020, and 2021 without our, our masked friend COVID? Canada has done quite well in comparison to many places around the world. Um, just a list here of uh, light blue is first vaccine, dark blue is the second vaccine. And then more locally, and these numbers are as of October 28th, so our, our numbers continue to climb locally. And um, literature says that we're going from that pandemic phase to the endemic, where you see it pop up from time to time and place to place. And um, looking forward to a return to, to, to normal, essentially, or a new normal, as people would say. So our budget outcome summaries, I, I've placed here your 2020 budget. It was a 9.585 million. And that's sorry, what the levy requirement is. In 2021, we decreased first time since 1999 as a response to council's wishes to uh, provide some COVID relief. And then from some conversations and a little bit from the roads committee, there was a thought to 3%. I mean, there was a 4% floated as long as we spend on roads, but I wanted to keep it at three. Uh, and that's the starting point. I, I would like to close the screen for a quick moment and let council talk about, is this 3% something we wish to pursue? more, less, um, it doesn't have to be a large uh, debate, but we can just get that topic. Does that seem in and around your expectations? Okay, thank you for that so far, Lachlan. Uh, I per, I, I'm uh, in line, I'm fine with the 3%. Uh, if we have to go over and it, it can be justified, um, I'm okay with that. I mean, we did decrease taxes last year and um, I'm okay with that. Other members of council, Councillor Lang? Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you. Um, I think it's a good starting point, 3%. Um, but the way I'm going to look at it is we decreased last year. This 3% takes us back basically essentially to where we were in 2020. So to me, I'm not looking at it as a 3% increase. I look at last year as, a you know, we tried to cut everybody some slack because of COVID. We're back up to where we were. So it's basically we're, we're coming back to where we were. So if we have to go a little above that, I'm not against it, but I def definitely agree with what the treasurer said. It needs to be spent on roads, on the infrastructure, on the things that are going to be there to last. And the things people are complaining about and noticing that some of our roads are deteriorating and are not up to the standard they'd like. So that's where I would like it spent if we do go past the three. But I think three is a good place to start. Let's work with that and see where we can end up. Thank you, Councillor Lang, Councillor Jaworski, and then Councillor McDonough. Thank you, through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, trepidatious, I guess that is the word uh, on the 3%. Um, I, I, I do think I'm not, I wouldn't be comfortable going, going over that unless there was a very, very strong rationale for the need for that. I honestly wanted to come in a bit under that, um, particularly because just sort of historically, if we look at our taxation increase over the last, you know, couple of decades, we often were above those kind of levels. So I think, again, we, we need to sort of rein it in a little bit, uh, or at least try, uh, you know, keep that in mind. So I was thinking more on like the two and a half, two and three quarters kind of um, a scenario. So I, I would be probably the least comfortable about going over, but I do really appreciate how uh, Councillor Lang um, put his explanation as to why he's all, all right with it. I don't dispute any of those points, but. I would like to try and definitely keep under that, not go beyond the three. Thank you very much, Councillor Jaworski and Councillor Lang, or McDonnell, my apologies. 
Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I'm a bit on both sides here. I'm sitting kind of on the fence. I I I like the three percent holding at that. Um, I don't really feel like going very far over that unless it's absolutely justified. And uh, I do agree with Councillor Jaworski. I would prefer to see it. I know it's a quarter percent, but a quarter percent can be a lot of money in, in the end of the day. Um, I'd rather see it more at the two and three quarters. I, I'm not opposed to cutting other things, but absolutely no cutting on the uh, on the roads and infrastructure budget, in my opinion. And uh, I mean, as we get into it, maybe my uh, thoughts will change as we get through some real numbers. But at this point, uh, I would like to hold at least to the three. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good information for you, uh, Treasurer McDonald. So you can continue on. Sorry, I, uh, splitting screens took me just a moment. Thank you for your patience here. So we're back on, you can see where we were. So we'll, we'll start with 3%. And again, um, this budget, I'll just go to the, through the procedures, is a little bit difficult or different, also difficult compared to uh, last year. Normally we go into the, the graphs and uh, we, and then we come to this budget, but given that the uh, priority is the roads committee, we have to start here because it really dictates what we do down the road. So right now we have one bridge in for capital works. Um, we also have a few fleet items, but they're all in and out of reserves uh, included in what I would call this year's base budget, but it doesn't include the suite of products, which we normally have like roads, uh, many more roads projects. So in a typical year, we'd kind of come in here, we would have already had 1.8 million in roads project, take some under reserves, and we'd come in about here, and then we'd start the conversation here. But this isn't our typical year. Again, our typical year does look like this, and we will have our second meeting having these charts and go through, through that. So we, we, we will get to that, but we're starting, kind of, we're reversing the order of the budget uh, meetings, uh, the second meeting and the first meeting. So general information, influence headed by the Roads Committee, I've said that twice now. Uh, Mr. Mills has said it once. Uh, it is it is the um, note. Target's 3%. And just so you know, the uh, 0.25 uh, is about $23,000 uh, if we did go to 2.75. So that's the difference of, of that percentage. And then we're introducing a few levels, uh, a few levels of service. So a few items. So this is how we'll go through it today. We'll mention an item, then we'll pop on to show um, the outcome. Uh, example, which is the first one we'll go through, is Richmond Road Industrial Park. Uh, Joanne would like to, or Mrs. Haley would like to speak to that. Um, if we need more today, we can do it, but I, I certainly can talk in general. And if council's interested, uh, Mrs. Haley's prepared to make a, a longer presentation for November 19th, the second budget meeting, uh, should you be willing. So consideration for break. I imagine we're not there yet. <laughs> I should really take that take that one out. That's way too early. Um, so the base budget, as I said, 7.9 million does not include a suite of our regular services. So let's get into it. Uh, Richmond Road Industrial Park planning. Um, we don't really have an industrial park. I know uh, Joanne or Mrs. Haley is interested uh, in, in preparing this or, or getting this started. Uh, this is just the start of the project. Richmond Road, we own the land uh, tangent to um, Canada Road 27 or Summerstown Road. And we also own the dump, which I believe we can now traverse. So there would be an idea to have a connection there and it's, it's off a county road onto ours from the 401. So we, we could put $35,000 in, there's 35,000 planning reserve. Um, I imagine that has some interest because it has no budget requirement to the taxation, uh, as well as it does set us up for the idea of having an industrial park. I'm just looking for council to kind of give me a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down and we can present that um, at next council meeting. But if council's not interested, then we won't. Uh, I'm 100% in favor of this. This lands has been vacant and owned by this municipality for uh, a long time. And I think it's time we start taking the steps to get something done there. Okay, perfect. I, I did see Councilor Jaworski thumb went up and Councilor Lang. So yes, uh, Joanne play, or Ms. Haley, please. Uh, Please prepare that presentation for the 19th and we'll include that in the budget. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, add a rescue oh, vehicle. Sorry, could I make a quick comment? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my apologies, uh, Councillor Jorsky. I did not see your hand up. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, thank you. Thank you, through, uh, Deputy Mayor. Now, I just wanted to briefly say that, you know, this idea of looking at an industrial park has been, you know, part of our strategic plan uh for i um since 2014 i believe so uh, i i just wanted to highlight that that you know we are really trying to move forward on items in our strategic plan thank you for that okay great and then 
I, I, I wrote this as rescue vehicle would be a support vehicle. Uh, in this case, we would return the fire chief's vehicle to, um, to be that support vehicle at station three, the Williamstown one. And the reason we would move that vehicle there is because in three years time, um, the mileage put on by the fire chief's vehicle would make it need to be replaced. So he's thinking that for uh, the longevity of that vehicle can be moved as a, a support vehicle into station three. Um, naturally our fire reserves are one of our strongest and uh, most um, well organized. So we could make this maneuver. So it would be adding the fire chief's vehicle as a support vehicle station three, and then having the fire chief get a new vehicle. This will probably happen a year and a half down the road with all the delays in manufacturing, but it would come from reserve. So there would be no net uh, taxation increase requirement. And also in perpetuity, we have the reserves um, set to a level that it can accommodate this request. So as we're uh, essentially putting a new vehicle in, it needs to be a council decision and I'll put it to your discussion if uh, this is something you wish to do. Um, yeah, certainly. I, I guess the question that I have is um, 60,000, like, are we not able to buy, uh, bid, put a tender out to get it at the, the government rate? I think we had tenders in the $35,000 range uh, this past year. I realize there's a delay on the delivery of them, but if we, we budget for this, uh, is that something that we can, we can get in on it and then just wait for it to come in? Yeah, certainly. We, we, I guess the sixty thousand would be the high end. It would be kitted. We are of the understanding the Ontario government has. Uh, there, there will be no Ontario government this uh, deal this year because they have so many trucks that they're not. They're not trying to. Sorry, they have so few trucks that the the demand is much higher than supply. But we anticipate it would be lower after it's kitted or close to that. Um, but I, I see Fire Chief Robertson. He might want to speak specifically to it because he's uh, looking at that number a little tighter. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh through uh, Deputy Mayor. The comment on that vehicle, the price that we're budgeting for, that would include all of the equipment that is added to that vehicle, be it signage, be it um, emergency lighting package, those types of things. So it, it would be a stock vehicle with those additions on it, so. Okay, I guess uh, one question I have, I guess, it, like, is this a year in advance of what it should be? Because we're not, there's no room for this vehicle to be stored inside in Williamstown. So should we be deferring this to next year once the garage and William, the new facility is up and running? Is that something, leave that money in reserves till next year? Or, or I'm just wondering what the what the plan is. If so, if, if the vehicle's purchased, is it gonna be, is, is your former vehicle gonna be sitting outside in the parking lot? Cause I don't think there's room for a truck inside that garage. The, the plan that we have now in place would be for the new Williamstown station, the renovated uh, roads garage would be completed in 2022. So the same year of the purchase of this, uh, of this vehicle. Okay, uh, Councillor McDonnell had a stand up. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, thanks Chief Robertson for that. Uh, I, I'm assuming just to give some background on that, I believe that the transfer of your pickup truck to uh, station three would be uh, mostly primarily used for, for hauling the UTV. Is that correct? That uh, station three has? Yes, so station three does not have a, a support vehicle um, to uh, add incidents, basically call, uh, carry um, dirty hose, all those types of things or any rural uh, items that we do in, in, in fields for wildfires, those types of things but it also would be allocated to pull the uh, trailer that where we carry our side-by-side, -side, our utility vehicle, and also would be available for the training officer to uh, move supplies whenever he's setting up training events. So it would uh, it'd be a multi-use. It would not be just allocated just solely for the station use. Okay, note it's uh, just from my conversations with Council Lang, and I'm sure he'll want to speak to this. Um, was just, uh, I, I know currently, I believe if, if that UTV is required in say a field fire, like it was, I remember in North Lancaster a few years back, uh, essentially a volunteer has to pin it onto their vehicle, do they not, or, or probably the station chief, Mr. Lang? Are you wanting me to? Uh, yeah, if you, if you can, just, I, I'm, I'm, I think it's just been, a, it's been something that's, uh, 
maybe been missing there just as far as moving that vehicle around. We, we maybe are asking volunteers to take a chance dragging uh, our equipment with their vehicle. Yes, it, it is. Uh, typically, if, uh, if the call is on the peanut line or somewhere close, we will often just drive the, the Ranger to the, to the scene simply because it's, it's, it's quicker than hooking up a trailer and, uh, and, you know, going by road, if it's, you know, we can just jump right on the penal line and we can get most areas in, in station three's response zone, but the, the UTV often goes to other areas, especially for grass fires or bush fires and, you know, this sort of thing or, or rescues sort of thing. So it does have to be towed by, uh, by a private, uh, you know, firefighters uh, vehicle usually ends up being mine just because I'm close and uh, I'm there. But uh, it would be nice to have a dedicated vehicle that could tow it and be, you know, backed into a station. And uh, they, I think we would likely have it backed into the station with the, the trailer just set just above the, the hitch so that it would just be a matter of lowering it and pinning it on and going. When if it wasn't needed, the truck could leave without the trailer. Um, I personally think that uh, the ambulance is that the other stations have these rescue vehicles. The other stations will, will gradually be converted to pickup trucks over time. They're cheaper to run, they're cheaper to safety. Um, they carry more people, they go more places. I just think that's the, the future is likely gonna be pickup trucks, you know, slowly replacing those ambulances as they are needed. But station three hasn't had that third vehicle at, up to this point. So, uh, I mean, it's a little self-serving for me to say, I, I, think, I think it would be great to have it in station three, but uh, anyway. I, I, I agree with the thing. The, uh, the other thing is we, we keep it too long. When it gets to station three, there won't be a huge amount of life in it. So I think if we can, how, how many kilometers are on it now, Chief Robertson? It must be getting up there a little bit. Um, you stumped me with that question. Um, I think it's in the, well, it's well over 100,000 kilometers, uh, but it is a 2014 model. So it is currently already uh, six to seven years old, depending on... Uh, have to think back exactly when it was received so uh when it's replaced it'll be eight to nine years old when it's replaced so all right does that answer what you want to know mr mcnell okay it stays in uh councillor jaworski do you have any comments or we're we going to move on okay keep going uh Cal councillor mcdonald or oh wow thank you Treasure. <laughs> got promoted <laughs> Uh, so this is the, the net effect, obviously, we've said in from reserve, in from reserves, no change on the um, uh, on the budget over here. So next slide. Baji Courts in Martintown was part of the uh, design plan. Um, our rec director, uh, Mrs. Servege, has applied for a grant. If we're successful with that grant, this will only cost us $2,500. Um, if we're not, then it would be the full amount. Uh, so the question would be, do you want to proceed if the grant is not received? Okay, so I'll start here. I'm, I'm in favor of proceeding. Uh, this falls in lines with our acti active living charter that we have. And we also had a study for uh, even for like, uh, I think it's the seniors and being active. That community center is very, very well utilized. And there's a couple of groups in there that uh, pre-COVID uh, are there. On a regular on a daily basis so i certainly would be in favor of this regardless and i think it falls in line under our strategic plan to invest uh, in an active uh, active living uh councillor jaworski thank you through you deputy mayor um certainly i don't disagree with anything that our deputy mayor has just said I guess I just want to have a bit more understanding of where what was the genesis of of this idea because uh, for all to keep with all those good points that Deputy Mayor Orton has said, unless the community is really excited about using about doing bocce, you know, if they if it's if it stays unused, um, I, then then it's you know it doesn't achieve its goals. So I guess I want to understand what was the genesis of the idea, and also I want to understand what is the um, the community partners there who are wanting to use it. I assume what what is their uh, what is their involvement in getting this up and running. Ms. Surridge. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go ahead and provide a bit more of an explanation. Um, so I was approached um, when I began by the Martintown Good Timers um, 
group that is, uh, they run a lot of programs out of the Martintown Community Center. So they used to run a bocce ball program out of a um, one of their members' backyards. And since um, they're not able to use that anymore, um, they had asked for a bocce ball court to be at the Martintown Community Center. I believe there was some sort of concept plan made for Ken Barton Park, which is the park at the Martintown Community Center um, in 2017. And within that site plan, a bocce ball court was also included in that. So when the grant uh, had come out from Ontario Trillium Foundation, I had thought that this was a good project for this type of, um, for the bocce ball courts. And so it is, the group that's behind this is the Martintown Good Timers, and they are a very large active community or group in the community. Um, so they are the ones that are asking for this, and they were able to provide a letter of support um, whenever we applied for the grant as well. So that is where this is coming from. I also just want to mention, too, that um, this is something that would be as part of the master plan as well if it wasn't um, approved today by council. Um, it is something that we could still be putting in the master plan for future because as uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Warden mentioned, it is part of our active living uh, charter and it does align with um, the goals of the township. Thank you very much, Ms. Servage. I am pretty sure that it's uh, former uh, school trustee Art Buckland's yard that the bocce ball uh, events happened at. So uh, are there any, uh, Councillor Macta now? Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I actually was just going to say the same thing. I know I've been approached multiple times by uh, by Mr. Buckland at different community events in Martintown, and uh, I have no doubt in my mind that if it was put in there, that it would be well utilized, just based on uh, conversations with him and some pictures he showed me of his backyard on a busy day. So it's uh, I I have no issue with this uh, with this project. I I do for sure hope we get the grant. But I do see more with you. I think it'll be utilized. Okay, <laughs> continue on, Treasurer McDonald. Uh, you might want to stay on, uh, uh, Mrs. Servage, uh, because the next one is North Lancaster. I'll just pop it up. Oh, okay. My apologies. Yes. No, no. The, the, this is this is good because you may or may not have questions. She she'll be very valuable to answer them. So the play structure in North Lancaster, uh, there is a grant. It, again, it, if we got the grant, it would be re reduced significantly. I believe it's in the tune of uh, forty five thousand dollars. Would be uh, the grant is successful. And then again, the question is, do you want to proceed if the grant is not received? And uh, if you want to provide a little bit more prompt um, information, please do, uh, Mrs. Servage. I'll just uh, correct quickly. It will be um, 4,500. I wasn't sure if you oh, said 45,000. Yeah, I missed Thank you. 4,500 if uh, we do get the grant. So again, for this project, I was approached uh, when I first started by um, some community members about this park. I do know that this park um, is quite outdated and needs to be updated if we were to, to put a new structure uh, in this location uh, just for safety standards. So I was approached by a community member. So that's why we also applied whenever this grant came up, we applied uh, for this location. So there is um, some community need there. They did provide a letter of support when we applied for the grant. Again, this is another um, item that would be part of the master plan if it wasn't approved today. It would be something that we would consider um, during consultations and the final plan. Okay. I was having a conversation earlier today with Councillor Jaworski. She had some very good points that I think should be brought up first, and then I'll go to you, Councillor McDonnell. No. Thank you. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor Warden. Uh, so, uh, so I play. I, I didn't play soccer this summer there at North Lancaster, but you know I played several years at, in North Lancaster, and so my kids were often on that on that play structure. And it is it is older, but certainly I didn't go on it, so maybe maybe it's not as solid as I thought it was. But I still thought it was quite in solid condition. But um, where I'm more importantly though is I. I think this is like a perfect opportunity where we should be looking at it as like a whole community hub concept because we do have l'école l'ange gardien right beside that also has a, a play structure and so i think i mean it's great that there i'm not familiar with which community group it was that provided a letter of support but i think this is an opportunity for us to reach out to 
uh, the school and understand sort of like, you know, because having two play structures in relative close proximity, I don't know if that really, uh, that, that gives me some, it gives me some questions, right? So I, th I, I would suggest before we move, and I, I didn't realize that this was ever on the list of consideration, perhaps I missed it, I'm sorry, but I definitely think that we should be looking at this in partnership with, uh, may, partnership maybe not right, the right word, but in consultation with, uh, with the school that is there as well and see what, what are the greater needs looking at it holistically. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, uh, Councillor McDonough? Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I know having grown up there and playing soccer there and going to watch my father or my cousins or uncles play soccer there, uh, I've had many uh, fond memories of sitting there pulling splinters out of my hands. It is in absolutely terrible shape. Um, I know there's, so the community group, I believe that was approaching, uh, approaching the service was between an individual that lives in the area, somebody that approached me. I believe I put them in contact with Ms. Servage, and then uh, I also put them in contact with the Lancaster Optimist Club. There used to be a North Lancaster Optimist Club that has now folded. So I know there is a plan. Uh, we haven't started anything yet on it, but at this point, we were looking at doing some just private fundraising, uh, similar to the way uh, Glenn Walter did, more or less just making phone calls, looking for donations to try and help offset it. Nothing is committed at this point. It is Unfortunately, North Lancaster has a lot of kids, but there's not much of a, uh, um, we'll say, community, strong community group there that's kind of running things on that recreation side. It's, it's more all run through the Glengarry Soccer League, anything like that. My only concern with going to the school would be, one, I'm sure there's a liability issue on the school side for having kids there off school hours, or if it's during the day with younger kids, when there are kids at school, you could never use it then. The other thing would be the proximity to the school and to that play structure. The play structures, I believe, are all located on the far uh, north side of that. And it would be quite a haul. I don't know how many parents would love to have their kids running out there while they've got one kid on the soccer field trying to be close. Not many people are able to bring uh, two parents, I'm sure, to every soccer game whenever they're at that age and they've got maybe another parent at hockey. I don't think it's very practical to expect people to be sending their kids that far. I honestly don't think the school board's going to want us having kids go on their play, play structures, being as it's their play structure. I'm 100% behind this. I would like to see it done. I really hope we get the grant. But at this point, it's it's almost got to be taken out because it is dangerous. I know I, if I had small kids, I wouldn't want them playing on it. Maybe if they were you know 10 or something, but I wouldn't want a five-year-old running up and down that thing. It's, it's very dangerous. If anybody hasn't seen it, go over and take a look. Because I know it's uh, it's known for giving splinters, and it's been there before. Well, it's got to be what 35, 40 years old. That play structure, Miss Servage. It's obviously before your time here, but yeah, I'm not sure the date of it, but it definitely is uh, quite old. If it's still like still a wooden structure, which um, is from quite a long time ago, so but I don't know the year of it. I know the individual who brought well that that had brought it again to my attention. Would she be in her 30s and? It was there when she was a kid. We both grew up in that area. So I would I would definitely say it's past its date. And it's general infrastructure, I think, needs to be replaced. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McDonnell. Uh, subsequent to Councillor Jaworski, then I have a comment. Uh uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into a debate with Councillor McDonnell because certainly uh, I don't dispute if it's if it's in you know that kind of poor condition. I guess maybe my kids don't. <laughs> We're telling me about their splinters, but I think to the point though, if this predates when the school was put in, I think that even more makes sense that we should be talking with the school. And maybe they don't want to play play with us. But I mean, if we look at the situation that we have in Williamstown, I mean, we have soccer there on you know Wednesdays and Thursdays, and kids are all over the Williamstown Public School uh, play structure. Now that one is quite close if you're playing at WPS, but when we're over playing at Charlan, lots of kids are going over to the the Roseon Park one as well, and the distance from like the fields to the Roseon Park, uh, you know, the um, the smaller the smaller play structure, the splash pad, the swings. You know, lots of kids are making that distance all the time. So, I mean, I don't, as a parent of, of you know, fairly young children, or they were very young at the, you know, also starting there. I think, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a, and 
but so again, I just would like to emphasize, I think we need to have a whole North Lancaster kind of vision and perhaps that would influence what kind of structure also should be there. I'm not saying there should be no structure or that they should only go to the school, but maybe, maybe it's a different kind of structure that we should have there in keeping in mind with what's already available in the community. So I would strongly urge that we reach out to the school and that we try to build a relationship with them like we have done at the Upper Canada in Williamstown. Thank you very much. Uh, I concur with that statement. I'm in 100% in favor of this project going forward, regardless. If we are successful getting the grant, great. I still think uh, I'd like to see staff reach out to the school board and 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 see if there's anything that, you know, like uh, Councillor George said, making it a hub of the village, right? So I think there's certainly merit there. And I mean, I don't want you to waste uh, months and months trying to get a hold of them. If they're not receptive, we move on. But if there certainly is uh, some reception and there's dialogue, it's not going to hurt. Councillor Lang, are you good? Yeah, I'd like to, I, I agree with most of what's been said here. I just, I'd like to emphasize that I'd like some community involvement. I'm not saying they have to raise, you know, exactly half or anything, but I want to see community I think these things fly a lot better if the community is involved, they feel a little sense of ownership. And uh, I mean, you look what happened in Glen Walter over the last year. Uh, Williamstown was very similar. You know, I know Lancaster was a little different situation with the, with the building down there because it was a replacement of something we use for township purposes, but the community needs to be involved. Otherwise it, they don't feel that sense of ownership and they don't uh, end up using as much, but I'm in favor. So. Thank you. All right. Just a, just a final comment, Deputy Mayor. I, I definitely know there is some appetite to, to involve the community. Like I say, there's just no group active right now that's in that, that area. So as I said, uh, that was the, the purpose of trying to engage uh, Ms. Donkers and her group uh, to kind of help. And I think the big idea will be making, uh, be making private phone calls. But absolutely, I, I, agree. I don't disagree with making a hub there, but I just think that the townships more or less neglected that park go completely to the extent of just cutting the fields and painting the lines. Nobody's ever come asking for it. And at this point now we do have enough kids there that it's maybe justified. And I think the township needs to take ownership of that park and not just let it go to hell. Fair comments. Okay, moving on. Okay, Glenn Gordon tree project. So I, I just have a few notes here and I'll, I'll go to Sherry Lynn if, or uh, Mrs. Servage if uh, more is required. So that we have had a forester in this location. They're scotch pines. They've reached the end of their life in that, that location. And there is some community involvement already uh, undertaken for ordering those trees. So this project, um, do we wish to proceed with it? It seems like it's it's at, at the uh, onset, but it is in motion presently. And so that, that's on County Road 34 north of the village. I don't know if it's on this first or second or third. I think it's the second concession from the Lancaster side. It's, it's around that uh, 34 and second concession. Force. Uh, uh, service. Can you give more of a description of what's going to happen there? Uh, to me, I'm thinking in my mind they're going to be cutting down those trees and replanting. I mean, we're getting a hundred something trees cut in Glen Walter for twenty three thousand. This seems a little bit high. So, could you kind of maybe delve into that fifty thousand dollar? Yes, for sure. So. Um... Yes, I was considering the cost that it was going to take for Glen Walter, so that could kind of give me a range. Um, but then also we have to factor in um, the stump removal because we will be replanting. So there'll be some stump removal, some landscaping, and then the replanting of approximately 80 trees. So that's factoring, that cost is also factored into this. Okay, and those trees are, they're, they're becoming a danger for any money that's in there? Yes, they have. Um, based on what the forester has told me, they have reached their life expectancy. So they are dying and they're quite tall trees and could be falling over, branches falling, so. Okay. Um, Councillor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Deputy Mayor. And, and thanks for asking for that additional clarification. I was also hoping for, for that info. But in terms of the, the moving forward, the plan for the future, like what are we putting in its place? Are we also just doing like a homogeneous uh, scotch pine or you know something that's all gonna have to be taken down all at once? Or are we gonna try and take something maybe of a more mixed approach so that we don't have to... Uh, and also there, I think there'll be, have to be some sort of community notice so that people understand what's happening in that location. So I think that will be very important because it's in a very prominent location. 
So if you could attach those two points, please. Yeah, so um, the, uh, the forester that we had hired to look at the trees had also provided a replanting plan. And within that, they provided the list of trees that would, um, that that would survive in this location. So it is a mix of, I'd have to pull up the, the details of what type of trees they are, but there is a mix of different trees that would survive in that type of environment. Um, and then also to the community will be aware of what's happening. Obviously it is a, a popular location where people would see all these trees coming down and would need to know that more are being replanted, similar to what we're doing in Glen Walter, really making the public aware that we're not just taking out trees and not replacing them. So that would obviously be in effect to, um, we would consider that when we are going to go forward with this project. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Servage, I have a question then I'll go to you, Councillor McDonnell. Uh, we have a parkland reserve. Is there not any money in that reserve for this type of project? Or has um, that all been spent on, on, I know we've been expanding, uh, spending some of that money in Glen Walter and whatnot, but is there any monies in the reserve to do this project? There would be some money in Parkland Reserve. Yeah, sorry. I just said, yeah, so we, we've moved 50000 for the uh, Glen Walter um, Park to offset our $100,000 commitment there. And I, I, I kind of feel like there's 74000 as of the end of last year. So there would be some money potentially to offset that if council wishes. It was just a question. I know we've had significant amount of uh, development and there's been some lots severed. So I know the thousand dollar per lot uh, should be putting some money into that reserve fund. Uh, Councillor McDonnell. Uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, at this point, I don't feel it's a top priority project to me, but personally, I don't know how much that park's utilized. I know I've stopped there if I picked up a lunch somewhere and eat there, throw it in the garbage and hit hit the road again. I don't see it as, you know, a appealing, quiet place myself, just based on the transports that'd be flying up and down 34, but and maybe, maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, and just a second comment to the replanting, would it not just maybe be a little more, not just feasible, but maybe a little more realistic that we don't just go in there and cut every single tree down. We maybe cut out, you know, if there's a hundred trees, you cut out 10 this year, replant them. And that way you get a little staggered growth and do that project over 10 years. Or is it really worth just, I mean, the problem is I think you could probably go to RFQ and say, you know, these are all elm trees or, or, or ash trees and who wants to come in and cut a hundred ash trees and take them for firewood. But this, you know, scotch pine is worth pretty well nothing based on it's a softwood. It's more of a pain to get rid of than anything. So uh, I just, if they had a value, maybe be worth doing it all at once. But I just think at this point, they're worth nothing. Even if the township guys cut down 10 over the summer and we replanted, brought in somebody with a stump grinder and replanted 10 a year. Okay, Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you. Um, yeah, I'm not keen on spending $50,000 here. Uh, to me, it's not worth it at this point. I think we can, I don't, I don't say we want to let this park just uh, fall apart. It's basically, to me, it's a little rest area. Um, it's not really a park. You're not going to take your kids there before walk. But if you're driving somewhere and they wanted to get out and stretch their legs, it might be something you'd stop at for a few minutes. But I, I just don't understand why we would want to, you know, to rejuvenate a park, clear cut it, landscape it, and then replant it. Like, Plant some trees in amongst the ones that are there, and then as those ones die, we, we get rid of them and uh, and let the others continue to grow. I mean, uh, I think the natural way it, a woodland works is not that you clear cut it and then plant a new bunch of trees. You know, there should be a way to do this, and I think we can do it without spending a huge amount of money. And uh, like fifty thousand dollars, I'd much rather put that towards some roads. Okay, thank you very much, um, Miss Servage. I guess my only concern is that. Uh, we need to look after anything that's dead in there. It needs to be cut as soon as possible. I would just hate for a family to be having a picnic there and, and a tree just, you know, wind comes up and, 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 and somebody gets hurt. So at the very minimum, I'd like to see at least if there's anything that needs to be cut, gets cut regardless. And then, and as Councillor Lang said, uh, you know, replant on, and, and Councillor Acton alluded to that as well on a year-to-year -year basis, uh, CAO Mills. 
Sure. Uh, between now and the next uh, budget meeting, I would, if possible, I would recommend that council go by and take a look at the at the area. Uh, I was there with with uh, Fire Chief Robertson and and Director Servage a few months ago, and if we're going to note this as a park, we we need to do it right. And part of that is making it look not just presentable, but uh, uh, Councillor McDowell noted the Scotch pine. I think uh, Ms. Servage did as well, that it, it doesn't ref it reflects very poorly on the municipality of the state it is in now. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that it's fifty thousand dollars. Certainly, we have internal staff. Uh, we can get an R put an RFP out to see if it would be cheaper, and maybe the commitment isn't fifty thousand. But as is, if we're going to note this as, uh, you know, at one time, I understand that it was an area, you know, along Highway 34 that was, you know, it's a nice shade area. People could stop in, have a picnic there. Um, it's a through fare, you know, from the 401 to the 417 between north, uh, the south and north Glengarry. So that, that, that's my thoughts on it. And uh, we'll take a, another look at it in terms of the funds, but also what needs to be done there. Uh, I'm not pleased as the CEO the, with the, the current state of the, the park. And um, I don't think you will be either when you see it. Okay. Uh, I would also comment before we move on, uh, there is an economic development uh, factor in this park. Um, uh, this summer I've been RVing across the country and there's apps that have, uh, there's specific apps that direct folks to where they can park and have a lunch and, and that, I'm sure that park would be considered one of those. So there is a slight uh, economic uh, development uh, factor to this. And I personally, I think we need to look after our parks. Like the, you know, Councillor McDonnell made a comment in regards to the Optimist Park that, you know, we've neglected it for years. Well, this is another park, although it's not necessarily in a, in a small community, um, something that we really should consider again. So, I guess, uh, does, that, does everybody want to just keep this on until the next meeting and then commit to driving by and having a second look at it? Or is it, there's no appetite at all? Hands up if you're okay leaving it on and then you'll commit to driving by between now and the next budget meeting. Okay, perfect. Continue on, uh, Ms. Servage or Treasurer McDonald. Yes, thank you. So now we'll get that summation. So uh, if we are unsuccessful with the grants and if no, the numbers stay as they are for Glen Gordon Park, Tree Park, uh, we're at 8,046,000. Uh, so we'll go to the next slide. I, I, well, I had this initially, so this would be one change, the contract inflation portion here, because I had it as weekly recycling and, and that's, an unfair, um, that's an unfair thing. I, I didn't want... Um, the, the reporters to think that this amount was based on just weekly recycling. So 216,000 is how much more for garbage recycling, uh, the inflation of that, and then switching to re weekly recycling. So this is kind of like um, the, the suite of products went up 216,000 over last year. This is not just weekly recycling. So I wanted to be clear in that, but this decision has been made. Um, so that will be to the budget. And obviously as of last Monday, uh, traffic calming. Uh, we have that coming forward. Um, CO Mills, as well as um, infrastructure, decided that we should set aside some money in case there are some projects that we need uh, to implement some of those traffic calming measures. Um, so fifty thousand. I'll put that back. I'm. I don't know if we'll see much much discussion on that. But if there is, I'm glad to hear it. I don't think we need to get into the weeds. Uh, a thumbs up if everybody's okay leaving that in. Continue, sir. Great, thank you. Replace items in the roads mower fleet. So uh, the manager of roads, Mr. Lalana, had mentioned uh, two mowers at 12K each, uh, one trackless attachment. And then there was one more attachment that he said wasn't a, a need, but a, but more of a maybe a next year thing. So we have taken one out. Uh, we haven't typically taken money out of the reserve for these items. Uh, Councillor Jaworski did ask the question, do we have a reserve policy? <laughs> and the answer is not specifically to this. So realistically, 
Um, you're just trusting my word for it. I mean, that is the, the word that uh, tandem trucks and graders was typically what we use that reserve for, but there is money for it and it wouldn't scuttle the reserve. So um, if council's interested, we could take 44,000 out of the reserve for this transaction, or we can just include, include it in the budget. So for discussion. So uh, uh, Mr. McDonald, I had a question. So Councillor Jaworski, oh no, she was not there that day. Uh, we had a county roads tour and we were, uh, we went to the St. Andrew's garage and specifically they were showing us the, uh, the dish mowers. And they, they, they talked about how reliable and, and how well they work and they're actually not even, uh, they're an actual agricultural implement. They're not a commercial. Uh, so I was just kind of curious to know what what we're buying, and if uh, if there's some potential to get on to the county and do like a multiple, um, you know, an RFP to order more and get a better price. Okay, I'll leave this with uh, Mr. LeBlanc. See if he's on. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, answer to your question, the disc mowers, the county ditches are a lot smoother than the, the ones we have presently in our township. Uh, they're very, uh, how can I say, they're not smooth. Uh, county, di county ditches are much smoother, not as deep in some areas. And those mowers that they use are basically for fields. In the uh, operator's manual, it's more for a flat surface than it is a ditch. Those disc mowers fly off and they fly into possibly oncoming traffic and, and things like that. Uh, we use flail mowers. They work very well for our application. Uh, they are, uh, we have lots of uh, rocks, which we're trying to, we try to, uh, to get, but sometimes we miss them and that kind of thing. Um, so we did in the past, we did get it going with a county tender on mowers. Uh, we did get one and that mower lasted about less than a year. It wasn't really uh, a more we use it. We had to use a, the same more typically all the time. We get good service and we typically get five years out of a out of a mower. With a, with a little bit of service, but we do get five years out of them. And now I have one that's pretty much out of pretty had pretty much had its uh, service life. OK, I'm confident in those numbers because I believe the counties uh, last three years and then they're 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 done. But and, and the price is similar. So I just was curious to know. So. Uh, I'm fine with those answers. I'll go to Councillor McDonnell, then Councillor Jaworski. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I guess, Mr. LeBlanc, uh, I, I, I know exactly where you're coming from, those disc mowers, that when they do get banged up, they are very expensive as well to fix, and I think the purchase price on them is a lot higher as well. But the uh, flail mowers, uh, are, are we getting the same width out of these? Because I know uh, if you drive down, we do one pass on some of the back roads in the, you know, in the county, the, the fourth and third line fourth concession and third line you know is one where I always you know but it's one what we cut but it is uh it does um when when you drive down one pass or two passes isn't uh very much compared to say one of those mowers are they all the same size or can we get a little wider one because I think the guys maybe between overlap and uh and the work they're doing they're not really getting that far into the ditch when they're cutting yeah yes uh they are the ones we use are a little typically a little bit smaller in width i can look into see if there's a little bit bigger it's just we might have to upsize the tractor it's based on the size of the tractor that was uh, the other question do we have the horsepower to run a bigger one uh right now i believe we do but uh, i'm depending on the the what kind of width we go with we may have to upsize the tractor i believe the tractor we have is a lease and the lease is up in 2022. So something else we could look at. Okay, so Councillor Jaworski. Thank you, through you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm, uh, don't want to uh, question whether these mowers are needed or um, what type of mower is ideal. I respect the comments of my colleagues that have already been made. What I want to touch on, though, is that this brings up, I think, an important point that Deputy Mayor Warden touched on earlier is about our reserves and what are they designed for. For example, we were talking about a park before, and it's like, why isn't it? The whole point of these reserves is building up money so that we can keep things, you know, as, as they should be. And so in my mind, in this case, um, it makes sense to me that, you know, cap equipment such as this should be coming out of the roads reserve. I mean, that was its purpose. 
And that's like the, you know, the whole point of having a solid asset management plan. So uh, I don't want to, I don't want to get too down into the weeds about this, the, my comments about the reserves, but I think that we need to start making sure that we are making full use of the reserves that we have to ensure that, you know, we're not adding on these small items here and there when we could be using reserves. I'll hand that over to you, Treasurer McDonald. Did you want to comment on that very good point? Oh, yeah, no, um, you just may see, as we develop slightly more comprehensively for the smaller equipment, um, a request to increase the reserve transfer slightly. I, I don't think these ones over time, I mean, 12,000 over five, 000, five years is it's an extra 1,500 a year. It will be small amounts, but I just want to make sure that we, as the intent, as I understand, was the tandems and the graders, we fund those. We could add a few thousand dollars and fund these. Not this budget conversation, but for next year, as we need that uh, to be developed. But certainly, if it's council's wishes to take the money out, we have it. And uh, if it's council's wishes to include the smaller equipment, uh, certainly I will look at those numbers for uh, 2022's budget, and you might see a, an increase. But sir, this year, fine. Yeah, well, we can use that money for that purpose. Uh I don't think it's if council wants to, I think it has to be done. I don't think it's it's a want, it's a, it's a necessity. We have to be budgeting for every piece of equipment, whether it's a weed eater or a plow truck. So I don't think it's a, it's a what council wants, it's, it's what needs to be done. And I know we're getting there and I know you've been working very hard. And, and as, as we go further into the future, every piece of, uh, every asset that this municipality owns needs to be budgeted for in some way, shape, or form, and money is put aside out of every year. So, no, I, I fundamentally, agree. I agree with you completely. So, um, I may with my term of term of choice with my words, uh, but so I agree with you completely. That's um, something we should do. Thank you. Uh, did Councillor Lang? Did you? I, did Councillor Lang or McTennell have their hands up? Go ahead, no. uh, Councillor Lang, and then Councillor McTennell. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Through you. Yeah, um, no issue with uh, flail mowers. I think uh, I, I like the way a flail mower works a lot better than the disc mowers. Disc mower leaves a carpet on top. The new growth pushes that carpet up. It looks terrible for a long time. Flail mowers chew it up. It uh, tends to get back into the soil quicker and the grass comes through and looks better, uh, you know, a few weeks later. And I do think they're a lot more rugged for, for where our staff has to mow. I mean, it would be nice to get our ditches in a little better shape, but at the moment we have to deal with what we have. I have no problem taking this out of but out of uh, reserves. Um, we do need to keep in mind uh, we did do some replace truck replacements this year, but we uh, we still have some trucks that are, you know. So I don't know the exact uh, condition of the reserves, but uh, we need to make sure we can do everything. So maybe we need to add a little more to them. But uh, anyway, it's nice to be able to use those reserves. That's why we put them there. That's uh, you know, not just to sit there. Councillor McDonnell, final comment? Yep, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I agree with Councillor Lang. Uh, flail mowers are definitely what we need. And uh, I would agree it should be coming out of reserves. And if we have to re increase the reserves, I, I'd agree to that. The, the only other comment I was going to make, and just because the tractors were brought up, uh, I'd like to see uh, if Mr. LeBlanc could come forward as we look for a new lease on the tractor. See, uh, unless we're using it uh, in the winter time, looking at uh, at renting snow tractors, they are a more efficient uh, way, of, in my opinion, of uh, getting a tractor for summer use. I think we take one already, but maybe it'd be replacing a full time lease if we don't need it in the winter time to to going to uh, snow tractors. I have a comment on that point as well, if if I may. Okay, uh, can, uh, I'll go to Mr. LeBlanc, then back to you for a subsequent. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, Mr. Mac, uh, Councillor McDonnell, to answer your question. Yeah, we use the, the mower. We do use it in the summer, uh, sorry, the winter time. We do blow snow back along the uh, bridges along the 401 uh, when they build up. Uh, we also do parking lots with them. And a lot of times uh, snow banks get higher. We use the blower to uh, push them back. So it, it is used in the winter time. Okay, no, that was just, uh, it was just a comment. It, it, not taking on any more leases than we need to on that equip that kind of equipment. And to you, Councillor Lang. Thank you. Uh, my my comment in there is is if we could find a way to uh, maybe the new lease could also be used uh, in the salt shed. I believe we're renting a tractor in the salt shed as a loader tractor to load trucks, 
and uh, if we had a, a bigger mower tractor that had had a loader, it a uh, loader doesn't need to be on while we're mowing, but that loader could be put on instead of us having to rent another tractor during the winter to load our salt trucks. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the way to go, but I think we should look at it. Maybe we need to go to a payloader or something dedicated for the salt shed. I'm not sure, but uh, I'd just like to have that conversation at some point and uh, make sure staff's thinking it, thinking it over. So if one tractor would do both jobs, you know, say the, the payloader or that rental fee that we have every winter to, for the loader tractor. Yeah. Okay, good discussion. Thank you. So we're gonna take that all out of reserves and moving on to the next one. Uh, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. So uh, this chart will change in that, that 44,000. There will be a negative uh, added to that. And you'll see that uh, at the next meeting. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> does anybody need a break or would you like to continue? It's been an hour. Uh, I'm, I'm okay to continue on, but uh, can you move the screen so I can see oh, everybody? Of course. Yep. Sorry. Uh, are we all good to continue on or did you just want to take a, a, a quick break? Continue on. I'm on mute. Um, and now we're getting into the roads committee uh, items. So uh, this is why this meeting is looking more like the second meeting rather than the first, because these are some big decisions. Uh, I might go over a few of them and we can talk about them uh, in a group or we can go one by one. Uh, please let me know. Uh, if I don't see you, just make a comment. You want to make a comment. So oh. I think for this one, Lachlan, because it's such a large discussion, uh, would it not be better if you went through the whole thing and then we come back to it and then do your full presentation, give your full comments, everybody make their notes, whatever they want to speak to, and then we'll come back and I'll go through you as one, one by one. I, I, think I, I think that would be the most expeditious way to do it. And, and okay. yeah, I like that idea. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the roads committee, I'm going to break this into two, two items being uh, the maintenance, actually three maintenance, then a few of the capital items, and then the discussion on um, taking some money out to do um, more projects in the uh, near term. So culvert replacement and supplies, um, based on the committee recommendations, uh, we'd like to put in $323,000 in 2022 and 2023. You can think of that as kind of a catch up and then the sustainable amount will be 130. Presently, we budget about 31,000. So in years one and two being 2022 and 2023, it is uh, an increase of 292,000, but then it jumps down to 100,000. Uh, this is a sustainable level of infrastructure investment. And additionally, there were a lot of drains put in in the 70s and 80s, and we're starting to see those come through. So uh, that 130 will help us get through that, um, I'd say that infrastructure deficit. Uh, moving on to granular shoulders for all rural roads. So this is a one-year plan in that we kind of get them up to speed at, for 373,000, and then, 37.5 is our sustainable way. There is, if you have that amount, you can do it over two years, but the committee kind of said, let's get it done one, once, right? And then maintain them from, from now on. We had 20,000 usually. So there is a net increase for this current year of 353, but then it normalizes, and it normalizes to only a $17,000 increase. Again, a sustainable level of infrastructure investment. Granular roads. So there was a, we currently apply about 20,000 tons on our granular roads. And uh, EVB actually came to us and said, uh, 34,000 tons per year would be considered a low level app of application and a best level of application would be, sorry, I'm looking over my sheet here, 40, 44,000 approximately. So we are taking a lower level of investment because the higher level would be at 1.1 million. Uh, but I mean, that's sometimes, sometimes the floor does over the Cadillac. So that's, and, and this would be a for, forever change in that $935,000 every year for perpetuity, we already budget 685, and this includes application and um, also dust suppressant, the water truck, and grading. So this is an all-encompassing number, uh, but this would get our gravel roads up to a sustainable standard, and this would come out of op this would be part of the operating budget for uh, future years. Consultant fees, yes, a little high, but we do need road design, bridge design for the next two years. As, again, that catch-up thing, making sure we're getting the right details. And then it would come down to 120,000 uh, to continue uh, with the projects. Uh, presently, we budget 40,000 in that particular item. So a net increase of $255,000. Um, once we get back to normal levels, 80,000 increase over that. Again, a sustainable level of infrastructure investment. 
So what this would look like, if we're culminating everything, I'm just gonna look away from the screen for a moment because uh, I see a different screen than you. I just wanna follow is, we previously mentioned those services, uh, 445, most of that being the uh, contract inflation for garbage and recycling. Um, culvert, and then we're added culvert replacement, granular shoulders, and we're at 9.5 million dollars. So that would be about where where a normal conversation, and this is where we would start. Uh, we do have to consider capital items doing our um, surface treatment and asphalt. So I'm just going to pop onto that slide. So these are the capital items, and sorry, I'll start with bridges and offsets. So bridges, uh, we've seen it with our OSIM reports. Matt Perry has consistently told us about 500,000 to, uh, to keep our bridges up to date. Uh, we already budget 200,000. Council moved that up 35,000 last year from 165. So I would recommend putting that money into a reserve to be spent immediately. So instead of just sending it to a project, you send it to the reserve in the project because that gives you that steady baseline on your operating budget. You put 510 in, you take 510 out. You take 510, you put 440 out or 600, depending on the year. Uh, it is a net increase of $310,000, but it is that sustainable level of infrastructure investment. And we do have, we didn't do a bridge last year. I, I don't know if we did the one the year before. So again, we're, it's a little bit of catch up. Uh, and that number may in the next four to five years turn to 533,000 based on uh, the OSIM reports. So available offsets that I, I we always have gas tax. So um, Deputy Mayor Warden asked me a question about this early this morning, and maybe I wasn't clear. So I, I'd like to share that with everybody. So we get $417,000 every year. We will next year. I believe it's called the Canadian Benefit, Community Benefit Fund, but I'm just going to call it gas tax for uh, continuity. Uh, we had a one-time top-up in 2021. This is our second one-time top-up in the last three or four years of $400,000. So that wasn't budgeted in this year's budget, but we'll put it to 2022. Additionally, we had a little savings from William Street, which we held in case our cost overages over into the new year. Those are all available to us. So we're going to put this extra $651,000 into our budget in addition to the regular $417,000. So that would come to $1,600,000, uh, sorry, $1,068,000. Uh, and that, that will come in to offset some of our, uh, our projects. As well, we have our surplus from 2020. Uh, it was $1.2 million. Um, we may be able to bring more in. Uh, once I finalize the uh, looping project, get all the bills in and, and quote it, it's to come to council, to make a decision whether we take that from general taxation as a developer. And then when we sell a lot, we just repay ourselves or it would go to the water, uh, unwater water. So I, I want to hold that there because it's kind of in flux, but we certainly have $600,000 free and clear um, from, a, from last year's reserves uh, that we can, can use uh, so the remainder to the roads projects. So that would bring us to 8.5 million. Um, just look over here, just highlight it. And that's where we're at. So we, we added the bridge reserve to sustainable levels. Uh, we're emptying out gas tax and general reserves. Uh, or not Gas tax should always be, there's no problem there. We always have the tradition as we get it, we spend it in year. So this is a, a unique year in that when we receive money in the middle of the year, we, um, we generally put it into the next budget. So that's a, Nice thing there. I, I also received, uh, I was a notice of OSIF or other community investment uh, funding. I believe it will be doubled over the next several years. We currently get 330,000 um, for it. Um, but until that is announced, um, we, we're carrying what we know we're getting this year. And I believe next year would the, the amount will remain the same, but if there's anticipation that in 2024 it goes up, that only further supports our ability to fund these things and uh, great to put uh, those those particular funding, um, provincial funding into infrastructure. So if I pop onto Roads Committee at Capital and Borrowing, and this is where the conversation changes from what we have done up to now and then what we can consider. Um, I did provide a, a spreadsheet to council um, and I'm okay taking questions and perhaps answering them more in depth uh, for the next meeting if you have them. I'm always glad to do that. I may not be able to answer everything now, but uh, pop here for a quick second. If we were to target that 3% for taxation increase. Based on what we have now, we have approximately $1 million to spend on, on capital items. Um, we can do a few things with that, spend that first, because if we go into the next slide, we're looking to borrow money. Uh, there's two options. So option one would be to borrow $4.65 million in 2022. And I would like to note at first, 
we don't pay for all of it. It is very much a line of credit. So we can borrow it, use it, borrow it, not use it, borrow you some of it, and we only pay for what we use, which is very um, quite handy because in many loans you pay as soon as you take the whole thing out. This is with Infrastructure Ontario. So option one would have an annual repayment of 307,000. That's the purple from the bottom, uh, second from bottom left uh, with a 20 year debenture. And then there would be, we'd still need to contribute from our, um, our own budget. Uh, as you saw, we had a million left to spend. So this would be 164. Perhaps it would be time to put some money, like if that extra money, if we're doing 3% to offset a little bit of next year's, because I, I think the budget will get tight next year as we don't have those offsets from gas tax as well as the uh, surplus. So 2023, 2022, certainly very easy to do. 2023 gets a little bit tighter, but it's possible that if we carry over some of that money, it gets a little less tight, but I, we need to have this conversation. So then the council would like it, then we'll start forecasting and we'll, we'll tell you what to expect. Um, if council doesn't want it, then there's no point uh, doing that research, but um, in just prepping for it, uh, 2023 would be tight, 2024 would be less tight. And I think by 2025 with our current plan, we'd be right back on and we'd have some incredible infrastructure, which would be a great uh, win for the community. Uh, this is option one. Option two would be to borrow 10.7 million. And again, it's like a line of credit in that uh, you only pay for what you use. So we would take out that amount, lock in the interest rate and interest rates will, in you know, all intents and purpose, be rising. I believe uh, Mr. Porter from Bank of Montreal said, he expects a 75 basis point, so a 0.75% increase. And some people are saying maybe one. So uh, the earlier, if we make this decision, the earlier we're locking that rate, probably more favorable for our township on the borrowing side. So through 2022 to 2026, we do this amount of projects. And in that we're borrowing all the money, there would be no uh, budget requirement for it. Uh, so it would be 706,000 or 1.2 million. Uh, from a financial perspective, I know the 20 year looks enticing because it drops the annual repayment amount, but many of these projects will last seven to 12 years. And um, in, in the car industry, you'd call it negative equity. We would, if we take the 20 year debenture, it will cause us to be paying for a road that has already been replaced again for another potential 13 to seven, year, seven years after it's done. So I'll open up to council because this is your, your big conversation. I'm just gonna bop one slide forward. Okay, that's for a second meeting. So yes, that's exactly where I wanted to stop open to you for discussion. So it will be about maintenance and then about boring really. So as you wish, I'll just close my screen. I'm having trouble. There we go. Okay, so before we get started on this, this is a big, big, big part of what today is about. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Councillor Lang and Councillor McDonnell for putting, and staff uh, for putting in extra time uh, coming up with this with the, with this plan. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, out of the box for our municipality, but I think uh, I think with the cost of everything go up over year over year, and the opportunity for us to lock in at a very good interest rate, um, I'm hoping uh, my colleagues will will seriously consider this and and uh, choose the right decision. So uh, with that, I'll start with Councillor Jaworski. She's on the left of my screen. I'll go to Councillor Lang and then Councillor McDonnell, and I'll finish. Okay, thank you through Deputy Mayor. And if I understand, I'd say all my my comments. Sure. Is that it? Okay. Okay. So I mean I'm gonna start, I'll start quickly on the maintenance side. I think I'll be fairly brief. But um when it comes uh, so culverts, I have no issue. When it comes to granular shoulders, what I saw presented was basically telling us that we're deficient nine times out of ten. And I'm certainly not an expert when it comes to these things, but when I drive around the municipality that there, there are some locations where, yes, I can see, oh, I, you know, our shoulders need some work, but that's certainly not 90% of the situation. And so I really question that item about putting, certainly putting that much in the first year on something that I'm not even aware w was such a big problem. I have, I have um, concerns there, so I would like to have a better understanding of where that is coming from. Because again, I mean, I think Councillor Lang said it well, it's like better, some, some of that money could be better spent on an actual road or on something we know is a problem. Uh, when it comes to the granular as well, the rate of granular application, that's the last, that again, not an expert in this. And I do understand that in some cases we might be doing tar and chip. And so it helps to have built up the base so that the tar and chip program is a lot less expensive. But again, that's not an issue. I don't have residents coming to me saying they want more granular. They might be saying they want more grading or they want more dust suppressant. They want more packing. But when it comes to actually having more granular, again, 
I have some questions there. Uh, bridge uh, on the bridge side, absolutely. That stuff that we can't. I mean, huge pieces of infrastructure, extremely expensive if you let them deteriorate. So I have absolutely no concerns there with the plan. Um, consultants, I wish it was less. I'm hoping that as our department, uh, you know, grows its capacity, that there'll be uh, less consulting fees uh, moving forward. So I see that that's the plan, but I, I certainly want to ensure that that plan gets gets met. Okay, so on the capital side, uh, I think the spirit of what we're trying to do here is basically catch up on work that we should have already been doing to maintain our roads. Um, you know, to the idea of having an asset manage plan, management plan and having reserves, like we should, have, we should have had a reserve built up over time. We should have been attacking these projects as we go, but we, we, are, not. We've, we are behind. There are areas of our municipality that are clearly uh, the roads need to be redone. Um, so I can see why it would make sense that we need to do tackle some. And I do want to recognize what Councillor Lang and Councillor McDonnell, the work that they've done with staff on really trying to get this finally rolling, like a, you know, a, you know, a very fulsome uh, plan moving forward to get us caught up. Uh, but it might be, it's a bit, a, a bit aggressive. I, I'll admit I was sort of wide eyed when I saw it the first time I was like, this is very aggressive. Um, in terms of funding these projects, I'm not in favor of taking it from reserves uh, because, again, <coughs> reserves have been earmarked for other purposes where we've taken the time to plan out and target that money. You know, like on a personal standpoint, for me, that would be like taking money from my child's RESP to fund my roof. I think that's a dangerous, uh, can be a dangerous um, approach. Uh, I do like the idea of the line of credit. I think that uh, because I do, I'll admit to one of the concerns I have about how aggressive this plan is, is do we really have the capacity to do all of that all, all at the same time, both internally and the, the suppliers that are out there? I mean, this is a long list of projects. Is there, you know, at, is there the capacity in the, in, in, you know, in the, the, the business, the businesses to do all that? So I like that it's a line of credit because I, I wonder if we'd be able to do it all at once. And again, um, you know, that it's uh, it's a more flexible, but going, it's very tempting to use a line of credit beyond uh, its intent. So I, I think it very much, we need to look at it very closely and make sure, yeah, like if we go this way, that there isn't creep on how that fund, those funds get used, or if there is, it's gotta be very deliberate. Uh, I wouldn't be in favor of using an instrument beyond 10 years, uh, very much to what our um, the treasurer has already explained. Um, I, I don't want to be paying back uh, loans on things that are already needing to be replaced again. And I think the other item that's not addressed is a part of this is putting again money into a reserve for roads capital projects to ensure that 10 years from now, we're, this is not this new exercise. I think this should be a one-time thing, not something we do regularly as a township. So that, and, 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 I'm, and I don't see that budget line item about inc increasing a, res a reserve number for roads maintenance. So that, that would make sure that we don't have this debit 10 year, you know, doing this again in 10 years. So I think, I guess in summary, I'm not against the line of credit, I think we need. I think we need to scale down uh, a bit uh, our vision here. I think some of it's a bit too aggressive, and I wouldn't be in favor of anything over ten years. Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. I'll go to Councillor Lang. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And through you, it's a lot to take in, uh, even at the committee level. I mean, it uh, it wasn't uh, presented lightly. I don't think. And I really appreciate the conversations. Thank you, Councillor Dworsky. And I'm uh, quite sure that Deputy Mayor Warren's gonna have some great comments as well. But it is exciting to be having a conversation about doing something a little different and uh, instead of continually falling behind, which I think we've kind of been doing lately. You know, we've tried to, to do some, some new roads once in a while, like Frog Hollow and Beaupre, and we, you know, we've done some some things that have improved, but at the same time, we have some hamlets that uh, were paved 40 years ago, and uh, we saw the condition of them this spring. And, and you know, and I know they're a little better in the summer, but in the spring, they're atrocious. Like you know, people didn't even want, wouldn't want to drive down it with a you know a real low car because they wouldn't make it. So I think 
this conversation had to happen. So I'll kind of go through kind of similar to what Councillor Dworsky did, just kind of give some thoughts on things. Uh, the culvert replacement, a lot of that uh, came about because when we bring up things like Heron Road, McGilvery Road, there's, I forget the exact numbers, but it's 29 culverts on one stretch and, uh, you know, 20 something on the other. And these are things that we, the drainage has to be addressed before we can do anything with those roads. And it's just kind of been ignored because uh, we didn't want to uh, bite the bullet and say, okay, well, these, this drainage needs to be done. So we can't really go move forward on those roads at all until we do catch up on some of this drainage stuff. So the culverts are in there. We've got to get them. We've got to get them replaced. And uh, so we went a little bit aggressive, but I think if we don't catch up on that drainage, then uh, the rest of the plan can't move forward. Granular shoulders, 373,000. What it is, is basically a half meter on each side of all of our rural roads at a, a particular certain depth. I don't remember the depth off the top of my head. I'm quite hopeful that this is not going to be at this number. We were putting in a kind of a worst case scenario that if we had to put that much, I mean, some of our tire and trip roads go right to the grass with very little shoulder to do. Some need to maybe the half meter, some don't need that much. So, but I don't think, we didn't want to put in a number that it came in too low. We wanted to put it on. So if we don't use it all, then great. We can put it towards something else or, you know, a little less uh, borrowing if that's the route we choose to go. Uh, the granular roads, what EVB had recommended to us was considerably higher than, than the 935,000 that we have here. They had uh, said, you know, that all roads need to have, I think basically 75 millimeters every uh, three years. Um, so what we did, through, uh, Councillor McDonnell and I did, is we went through all our granular roads, took out a map and got some highlighters out. And we said, which roads are high priorities? Which are, which are medium and which are low. And a road like my own road, which is a dead end and I'm the only one living at the end of it is very low. So it doesn't need to have that granular replacement at the rate that the others did. But some of our roads, you know, that as long as they're still granular need to be kept up a little bit. Went with a plan that addressed it, you know, from, you know, on, a, on different years, like maybe three years on the, the heavy roads, you know, five or six years on the others and seven or eight years on the roads like mine. And it doesn't mean that you don't touch those roads for seven or eight years. It just means that the full 75 millimeters wouldn't be put on. It would take at least that long to get it on. You might do uh, do the road twice in there, but just put on half rate, or you might uh, go the whole time and just grade a little more often. But it, we just had to come up with something to get a number that we thought we could live with. Because it was, you know, instead of 935, I think it was 1.5 uh, or 6 million that, uh, that was recommended and, and we just couldn't fit that in the budget. So this is the compromise we came to. And hopefully I think, it, I think it's gonna work. I'm confident that that can work. And uh, I'll try not to phone and complain about my road very often. So bide my time for a few years. Now, when we get down to the borrowing, we compiled a list of roads that we felt in the township through council's opinion and as well as uh, our roads staff, Chris LeBlanc was a major influence in this. Which roads need some attention, which are in terrible shape, which need to be some attention to uh, get them up to par and which roads maybe we've spent a lot of money on like uh, South Service Road that needs to, it was slated to have two lifts on, it's only had one. So if the money we spent, we don't want it to be wasted. We want to, to, to do that maintenance that was supposed to be the second lift after a few years so that that road can last, you know, potentially 20 or 30 years. So the list was compiled and, uh, you know, that's where the 10.7 million, if we were to do everything that was compiled in that list, that's where we would be. I'm not saying we need to go that far. I'm very, very hesitant to start the borrowing just because it's very hard to get out of that. You will get in a cycle and we will likely be in debt forever if we are not careful with this. But at the same time, if we don't do something with, uh, without increasing taxes a lot, we're looking at 30 years before we get to this list that of roads that we think needs to be done sooner than later. So we're kind of uh, a little bit stuck here. I think we have to be very careful as a council. We have to start this process and, uh, and work our way through it. Uh, hopefully, uh, the, you know, the next council, whether it's us or someone else, will uh, continue in that, you know, because we only have a year left here, but we'll continue. This is a, is a long-term thing that we're starting here. 
you know, if we borrow for 10 years, I do agree with Councillor Dwarski. I don't want to borrow 20 years to pay off something that might only last 10 or 12. But the next 10 years, I think we have to be very careful of this. But I, I think we have the ability maybe to get our roads up to the, the state that they should be. I think our residents put a lot of emphasis on the quality of the roads. And I think we need to do something to get them there. And interest is cheap. And the cost of doing uh, the construction, if we wait the 30 years, it's going up four or 5% every year. So financially, we're better to do it sooner than later. If we wait, it's going to cost so much more by the time we get to them that it's not going to be feasible then either. So I'm going to leave it at that for, for comments. Uh, it's not an easy thing to, to decide to, to take this step. But if we're careful and we do it right, I think this is going to save us some money. Uh, you know, instead of paying four or five percent increase every year, we're paying two point something with a you know a line of credit that uh, we can get some things done and get things up to where they should be, and uh, keep moving forward. I think I don't want to see us stagnate here. I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you very much, Councillor Lang and Councillor McDonough. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, so I'll just thank uh, Councillor Lang for for all the hard work he's done as, uh, as well as the, uh, the staff that were involved in that committee. We, we spent countless hours in those rooms. Uh, 8 a.m. turned into 11 pretty quick most days. And uh, looking at this, I think the narrative of this entire committee and everything that's come out of it has been, there's a lot of infrastructure in this municipality and a lot of it was maybe neglected or was pushed off over the years. And I know we can sit here and we can say, you know, every budget we've sat here and said, we want McGilvery and Heron done, or we want these roads done, or these have to be an absolute priority. And I just don't think we can operate like that anymore because things happen throughout the year. And we see what happened with, well, McGilvery and Heron are a perfect example. Last budget, this council really wanted them done. And we said we'd reallocate some funds to do them and we're no further ahead than or behind really than we were last year this time. So I guess I'll go through it quickly. The, the culverts, I agree, and that's where that came out of was discussions on those two roads. Well, we can't do anything until we fix some of the issues there, and the issues got to be bigger than we thought they initially were. Uh, the so shouldering, I think uh, I'll agree with Councillor Lang. I think this is, I, I think it's overpriced in the budget, but we wanted to be very careful in where we were going with that number. As far as the shouldering is concerned, if you drive around, there's a lot of, especially you get into some of the back roads that are tar and chipped. Uh, Example, Frog Hollow and, and Boat Prey Road, those are two roads that are going to, they, they will fade quickly without a gravel shoulder in the sense of maybe the road that stretches towards uh, the county road coming out of Baynesville and our road along uh, in front of SJ McLeod, that, uh, that entire road is completely destroyed just from agricultural traffic going down that road and no shoulder there because the, the edge of the road just begins to move in and further and further and now it's at the point where there's there's essentially a lane and a half there. Um, so I think the, the shouldering is essential in keeping this infrastructure and getting as, as much of a lifespan and longevity out of it as we can. The granular roads, I know going farm to farm, I get a pile of complaints on. There's uh, one that comes to mind is the uh, one that goes from the third to the fourth concession, I believe it is, right, um, the first line road, I guess, off of um, just east of the old berry farm. Uh, there's a little section of gravel that connects the two concessions. That road is always in terrible shape. It's horrible on the vehicles. If you drive some of these back roads that aren't getting enough gravel based on the length of them, where we're factoring them, we figure they're low, low traffic, but it might be heavy traffic. And I, I think we, as Councillor Lang said, we did a good job when we pulled out the maps and we made a couple of maps with highlighters and, and just went through it and more or less negotiated back and forth on what we considered a high priority or not and what needs uh, over the lifespan of that road, how much it needs. So I think that we're bringing, bringing the gravel roads to where they should be and, and going to maintain them and have a, an actual plan to do it as opposed to putting gravel on every second year. And we're doing it by a half of the township. We're putting it on road by road and going on uh, treating it a little more uh, precise this way. As far as the list concerned, like Council Lang said, we base, we base that off of Council's opinions and more, more importantly, the maintenance, uh, the maintenance team we have when these guys find an area on the roads, whether it's uh, in the summertime or whether they're on the plow, they're making notes about all of our roads and we really haven't been putting those to good use, I think, over the last number of years. So really basing this plan and priorities off of that list they brought us. Um, I'll agree with my other two Council colleagues. It's written. It's hard to get into borrowing when you haven't had to. And at this point, we're looking at it where, you know, we, we could, I, th I think the way to look at this is we're we can either treat it the way we've been doing it 
and either significantly increase our budget year over year to pay for some of these projects. And we're still going to be behind in infrastructure or we can put, put a strong plan in place. Money's cheap, but money's cheap. The cost of goods starts to go up. And then we've seen that for sure in the last year and a half. So I think 5% increase on inflation. I don't think we're seeing the end of maybe five or six or 7% increase year over year. So I think this, I think this plan to borrow was going to pay out. I know uh, maybe people at home are or the, the general public maybe don't understand, but this loan isn't something like a, uh, isn't, it's, it's more or less like a line of credit. Like Mr. McDonald said, it's not like a loan where we're taking a loan and, you know, it's renegotiated in five years to the day, uh, to the interest rate of the day. This is a locked in interest rate at 2%. I don't know one business in the municipality that wouldn't jump on that if they could as an operating loan. It's a great rate to the, for a great uh, number of years. I do not agree to go over 10 years. I don't think it's worth, you can't budget, uh, borrow on an asset that's going to outlive the, or uh, the loan's going to outlive the asset. Um, I guess I'll, 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 I'll kind of leave my comments there. I think the, the numbers look really big when you're looking at them, but if you look at, especially the Hamlets, we're proposing sections of Hamlets per year, the Northeast quadrant of Lancaster one year, the Northwest, the next and South Lancaster in the same year as whatever portion. So it looks like a lot of roads, but it's really, we're just, you look at that list and there's a lot of just, a lot of just hamlets in there. So I guess I'll leave my comments there. Okay, thank you. So uh, having been on council since 2014, it has been um, painful at times, uh, driving down a freshly uh, paved or uh, tar and chip road and seeing a culvert installed after the fact. Um, and it, I could name uh, Street Road, uh, the second concession right uh, near the old Berry Farm off Highway 34. The list goes on and on. So culverts, uh, it's, it's the base. Uh, basically, it's the footing for the foundation. And I'm fully in favor of, of that. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's, it's long overdue. Granular shoulders. Uh, in my previous uh, career driving uh, fuel trucks and septic trucks and propane trucks, the roads are dangerous. And, and a lot of our roads, uh, especially the smaller rural roads, there's just, there's no shoulders at all. Um, and uh, it's just, I think it's just something that needs to be done. Uh, it is a steep price tag, but uh, you can't put a price on safety for someone walking um, on the roads. Uh, you just can't put a price on that. Um, as for uh, the granulars, I'm kind of going through the slides one by one here. Uh, the granular roads, uh, again, it's, it's a steep price tag. Uh, I appreciate the effort. I think this is probably one of the longer amounts of times that you gentlemen spent trying to figure out which was what, and I certainly appreciate that. And I think you, you hit the nail on the head with that. Uh, Martin, you get no gravel for about 15 years, and uh, the rest of them, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, no, you did it right with, with uh, rating the roads. And I, I thank you guys for that. Uh, consultant fees, we all hate them, but you know what? I mean, we don't have the staff resources to do all these studies. And unfortunately uh, in 2021, you can't just do what you want. You have to follow provincial legislation and these studies need to be done for us to move forward. Um, that's just the way it goes. Bridges, long overdue. I mean, I don't know who can remember the, the issues that, uh, you know, another province had a number of years ago, bridges were collapsing literally as people were driving and that always sticks out in my mind. Um, we don't want that in our municipality and, and as our roads, you know, equip, we're predominantly agricultural and agricultural equipment's getting larger, cars are going faster. Uh, Bridges, you know, we can't skip on that. Uh, sorry, this thing moved ahead way too fast. My apologies. Um, the gas taxes, uh, they are what they are. Same with general reserves. Um, so in regards to borrowing, um, I think it's a breath of fresh air. Um, interest is very cheap these days, but the cost of doing these projects are not and year over year i mean we've seen increases quite substantial you know year over year 
uh, and the the cost of 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 um, uh, fuel these days has just gone through the roof. So I think if we're able to to uh, get a, as much done as possible, I think uh, we'll we'll we're going to save the money and in interest just in the cost of doing the projects. So I'm certainly in favor of uh, borrowing uh, some money and using our reserves, uh, to, you know, complement and get the, get the work done, get the work done. And, and the option one for me kind of sticks out, uh, borrow some money, but use the money that we have uh, and, and invest in our critical infrastructure. Because as uh, Councillor Lang said, you know, <laughs> Everybody calls about the roads. If the roads are in rough shape, uh, you know, uh, so it's it's the most, um, it's the largest asset we have and everybody basically benefits from it. So I'm certainly in favor of borrowing. It's not something that we've done in the past, but it doesn't mean that we were doing it right. And I think that we're at a point where we need to get, we, we need to do the catch up and we need to, to uh, we need to do it over a 10 year period so that we're not, as, as Treasurer McDonald said, negative equity. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want to be paying for a road and, it, and it's due to be redone. So um, those are my comments. Um, um, Mr. McDonald, I kind of had a question in regards to the Capital Works and just for the, for the viewers at home, if you wouldn't mind kind of explaining the difference. So. Uh, Capital Works option one, for example, on the right side. Uh, so it says the construction cost is twelve million four thirty seven five sixty seven. Um, if we were to debenture that over ten year period, the cost of borrowing is six hundred thousand. Can you kind of explain how that works, just for the general public at home? So our annual repayment on the loan. So if we were to borrow, we're going to borrow. The, uh, the 4.65 million, we're going to do 12 million in projects. So we will fund some of it. I'm on slide 45. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I was uh, trying to br bring the slide up so that the public can see what you're yeah, talking thank about. Thank you. I, I certainly appreciate that. That's what I had on my screen. So would yeah. you kind of walk us through the slide as a whole, explain. So if we borrow the 4.65 million in 2022, we do the 12 million in projects, we debate. Could you explain that uh, and then go also then to the second page? Of course. Uh, two, 10 years, I don't, there was no appetite for 20 years. So would you mind uh, just doing the both of them and explaining it uh, for, for the viewers at home, please? Yes, and if you have any questions after what I say, I'm sure the viewers would too. So I'm, I'm glad to answer those too. So this is Capital Works option one. I believe you can see it on my screen borrowing 4.65 million in 2022. Again, the line of credit. I'll be looking away because the, the main screen's here for me. I wanna to point to where I am. So the cost of construction, and this is over the term of like of the plan. So that's not just this. So we're going to borrow 4.65 million, but we want to do 12 million worth of work. So with a 10 year debenture, that 4.65 will cost you, or will cost $600,000 in interest essentially. That's what that number is. And borrowing during construction, they have a construction rate, which is actually 0.67%. So during construction, it's a different rate than after construction. So that's the difference there. The annual repayment is the amount that we're going to require to, to pay for it, interest and principal, essentially like a mortgage. That's your mortgage payment. But if we borrow at 4.65 million, there's also an annual requirement from the budget that we would require from taxation. To do, to do that whole 12 million, obviously 4.6 million, you can't do 12 million in work otherwise. And, and the reason if you're looking at it and thinking, oh, well, if it's a 10 year plan, um, they're borrowing, they have 14.6 million, that's because there is interest on that and the cost of the construction goes up. So uh, the with, uh, as we've noted, uh, several councillors and uh, yourself, uh, Deputy Mayor, is that uh, our inflation isn't a basket of you know apples and oranges, it is asphalt, it is oil, it is heavy on construction materials. So again, if I switch to the next slide, so option two, we borrow 10.7 million again, like a line of credit. If we don't use it, we're not paying for it. And this plan is 2022 to 2026. And I believe there is some tail end uh, on the other side, but construction costs would be 10 million. The cost of borrowing would be 1.3 million. And the reason the construction costs would be lower in this case 
is because we'd be doing more of it up front. So that inflation factor over the, sever- the, the back end of it wouldn't be adding to the cost. Um, borrowing during construction would be uh, more expensive because, well, we're just doing more. And then the annual repayment uh, would be what we require to pay off, again, like your mortgage payment. Uh, interestingly, r- when running the numbers, uh, like 20 year debentures, they do actually cost more, but a 10 year debenture done right and factoring in inflation sometimes does cost the taxpayer less in present day dollars, which is always very important, right? Like my dollar today will buy me 95 cents worth of stuff tomorrow in our world for construction. So that's that's why council is considering this is because it isn't a dollar for a dollar, it's a dollar and then it turns to 95 cents and it turns to 90 cents over time, particularly on our construction time. And even if we use 4% on the lower end, it still it degrades your money. Um, it, it's like keeping your money in a checking account, not earning savings, uh, any percentage. You, you don't hold your money, you're actually losing value. Same thing with the municipality to uh, to bring it uh, back to, to our level. So um, those are the options. Um, and you'll see, I'll just pop back one, in particular, the annual repayment at 1.2 million. Uh, that would be for 10 years. If you look at option number one, it would actually 1.5 million, which we, we have to find. So in that case, as much as like everybody knows my thoughts on debt, but um, financial sense, and I, I have to put my own thoughts away, are that perhaps borrowing that $10.7 million might actually make the most financial sense for the township, because not only do we not pay for what we don't use, it, it costs us less, as you can see, 1.2 versus the, um, the 1.5 when you aggregate those two numbers. Um, yeah, it just, it, it actually makes the payments less when you consider the budget constraints too. So I, I'd like to put that forth to council, which you probably wondering who who's taking control of Mr. McDonald over here, recommending borrowing more, but at $10.7 million, like if we don't use it the first year, we don't pay for it. So like we can, if we have extra room in the budget, we'll just create a roads reserve and we'll, we'll take that first and then we'll start borrowing once that's emptied. And like every year, if we increase a bit and, and some municipalities, I'm going on a slight tangent here, if you'll allow a deputy mayor is mm-hmm. So some municipalities will say, let's do 3%. I'm going to talk about two things. So um, that, and then um, kind of when we get uh, growth of municipalities. So we'll say, let's increase 3% and put uh, 1% dedicated. And sometimes they add it onto it for like a plan like this. So 1% at current would be approximately $95,000. So that number was bandied about in the roads committee just once. And I, I kind of stuck to it because the, the comment was if we need to borrow the community tends to like to see it on infrastructure projects because they see it. It's not. It's not like we're adding um, an administrative staff or you know like many of the countless things that people don't enjoy hearing about. They like seeing roads and structures being built because they see it, they drive it, they live it. Right. Uh, the second point too, if we're aiming for a three percent uh, tax, I don't. Now that I've explained this, I'll pop this screen up. So if we're aiming for a three percent tax increase, we also have to be reminded that assessment will go up this year. I haven't heard from impact that it's changing and we have had considerable amount of uh, building growth. So there is a possibility that your current tax base, their assessment will go up, but if we increase the, what they fill in their pocket by 2.4%, we might be able to gather some from new growth. So like the new sheds, the new buildings, like that will factor into our conversation. So a 4% net levy requirement may actually be a 3% uh, increase to the current taxation, or like, you know, you, we might have some maneuver room there, I haven't, uh, when I made this MPAC, uh, I think their deadline is October 29th to get it to us. I, I had it for the 28th, so I don't have the information. Next budget meeting, I should. And, and that can help fuel uh, that conversation because if we can increase what we, we require by 3.5%, but on the existing taxpayer only fill at 2.75%, not only do we get a little bit more money to be ahead, borrow less or do more, we also get to uh, Councillor McDonald, or McDonnell, sorry, I. I was raised saying McDonald for a friend and I, I, I fail him every time. So Councillor McDonnell and uh, Councillor Jaworski might be able to get that two and three quarters. I apologize. Uh, I, I try to, every time before I go to this meeting, you know, I'm a, I'm a McDonald. My name's Lachlan. It's not nice to say name wrong. So I apologize for that to Councillor McDonnell. Well, listen, uh, the stress that you're under actually recommending uh, Council borrows money. We're going to give you a pass on that. And uh, we certainly appreciate you putting your <laughs> your own personal uh, financing ways uh, uh, aside for, for the moment. I'll go to Councillor McDonnell. Thanks through you, uh, Deputy Mayor Warden. Uh, no, for sure, Mr. McDonald, you've got a pass today. Um, 
So just a question as far as I, I, I don't know if I heard anybody else really give an option idea. So I figured I would pop out and, and make a few comments or questions and uh, a question or two here. Um, between option one and option two, over 10 years, I think we've thrown the 20 year uh, debenture rate out. So over 10 years on both options, one at 4.65 and one at 10 and, or 10 and change, was it there 10.7? Uh, um, I, I guess a question from Mr. McDonald, maybe you did kind of already answer this, but would we not be on the same lines as Councillor Jaworski said, building a reserve to get away from this borrowing in the future and doing this as a one-time thing to get us to a point where we can sustain this year over year and continuing to increase our reserves while still spending a large quantity of money on infrastructure and making sure these, uh, these projects all stay up to up to the quality they should be at or the uh, sustainability have the sustainability i guess in the long run should we not take the go for the larger loan and continue to build the reserve we have to the point that maybe we're at that you know 11 million dollars in 10 years and then at that point we'll be taxing a large reserve as opposed to trying to build because i see either way we're going to have to build a large reserve or we're just going to be in 10 years when this loan is paid off or maybe in eight years if we pay it off early we're then coming back to the same thing and who knows what interest rates of that day will be. They might be at three and a half percent and it won't be as nice an idea to be borrowing. Should we maybe go for the larger amount, maybe get these projects done quicker? Like you said, it is uh, a larger upfront cost, but uh, or a larger loan, but we will be getting more done in the first in the initial time. And overall in the end, probably spending less money on doing some projects because of the in, or the inflation that'll be happening if we're using some of our own. So that's a that's a very good point to make because uh, it does put a lot of strain on a budget. Uh, naturally, everything does. But uh, I think your point you're trying to make is if it's going to cost us five hundred dollars to borrow the money now for ten years, when we're done that, we still we still need five hundred thousand. Like we still need to be able to, to do have that. that money. Or that, that 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 the equivalent of that loan to to do the next set of projects. Yeah. So so in that case, like uh, we, yeah, because you'd have to add to that. Uh, if I'm looking at option two at 1.2 million a year, that will be going away from us. In theory, you'd want 1.2 million put to a reserve a year, and that's to, to, so we don't have to do it next time. Now, I, I think that's that that would be considered a non-measured approach because it would be a 10. The thirteen percent increase in taxation, but I think we should have an eye towards building that reserve as best we can while fitting in this plan. Because um, I, I know I like on the personal finance side, people will say, "Well, I don't want to save for a roof. It was forty years, and my roof collapses in twenty years. I've only saved twenty thousand. Like, well, it's better to have to borrow twenty thousand than to borrow the full forty thousand if you hadn't started saving for it." So um, I will certainly take that into. Uh, our second meeting uh, and, and forecasting to see where we can find those those amounts. They might not be the full amount that are required, but to be quite honest, I don't I don't think that's uh, feasible to the taxpayer. But any extra money, like in this year, if we can put that one million away into a, a roads reserve, then certainly I think that's that's the spot to put it. Uh, I, I do say we should spend our gas tax funding uh, in year just because uh, we can we can carry it for five years, but it, it is kind of Free money to us, and it, no, I shouldn't say free. It's come from our all, all the drivers of Ontario, so it's it's another form of taxation, but not our taxation. Um, we use that, and then whatever we have surplus and don't spend, like I, I would, yeah, I'll, I'll create a roads reserve, and I'll, I'll make a um, staff report to do so for the next meeting, uh, council meeting or um, budget meeting. And then once we run those numbers, I'll have a better idea of how much we can put away per year. And then as our taxation grows, continually put more into that, and by the end of it, hopefully have an amount that we can at the very least go a few years without borrowing and hopefully by that time be sustainable. Because that's what this whole budget is about um, on maintenance, sustainability, on capital sustainability. And um, I do agree with spending reserves. Um, we put it aside to build things. It's uh, Sometimes you'll hear me say that's not what was set aside for, but certainly if it's for roads, it would be wonderful if we, if we have, it would be very simple for future councils if we can say 2.1 million to roads reserves, 1.8 million out. Next year, 2.1 to roads reserves. We want to do more. Oh, we have 3 million. Let's do 3 million. Like in the fire service, it's so easy. And I agree with you. I'm rambling just a touch, but uh, I don't think we'll be able to get there perfectly, but we'll be on our way. And I, I, I like that thought. And I um, uh, will consider that with my uh, forecasting uh, when I come back to you on the 19th. 
Perfect. No, I just figured when, as opposed to depleting all reserves to get these 12 projects done, my issue I see is in 10 more years, we're going to have 12 more projects that are now a priority and these 12 roads will be off everyone's radar, but there'll be 12 more that will be sitting there. And, and that this is essentially fixing as, as Martin, uh, Councillor Lang and I said, when we, we looked at this project, this, these projects, these 12 projects are essentially just fixing infrastructure that is as existing. This isn't upgrading any services. For, well, it's upgrading the services as far as fixing roads that are, that are, that are in very poor shape, but this isn't increasing uh, service as far as a gravel road being turned to, tar and chip. This is fixing existing tar and chip and asphalt roads that absolutely need attention. And and one comment that I, I know always sticks in my mind is, you know, somebody complains about the snowplow work on a road, Chapel Road's always got this terrible snowplow job on it. Well, it's it's a very uneven road. There's there's never a spot on that road that it's the plow is consistently across the ground. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't move six inches. So that's it doesn't just affect uh the rough ride on it in the summer, it also affects it largely in the wintertime and, and the safety aspect of being on that road in the wintertime during a storm. So just, uh, no, I think it's, I think you're on the right track there with that, so. And in fairness, if I may, I want to be fair to current council, past council and all municipalities, the infrastructure deficit is a real thing. It's very hard to fund and there was a lot more funding in the past. So it was taken into consideration. You do the work and you didn't think you'd had to fund it because you would get there used to be more money road offsets from uh, MTO. Those things have changed. So there are many municipalities are, are facing these same circumstances. So in fairness to this council, past councils and all councils and municipalities, it's it's a tough spot to, and there's a lot of downgrading of uh, financial um, obligation to the lower tiers. I'm sure a former engineer I know could go into it. He's not here right now, but uh, um, ro roads used to be funded with an Ontario transfer too, which is, is a way. Okay, good, good discussion. So I have a couple of questions uh, and then I guess we can, uh, if there's any other comments, uh, there's no worry, I'll allow for that. So if we were to go to option one, borrow the 4.65 million, um, what projects are gonna be done in, in like 22 and 23? And then if we were to borrow the 10.7, what projects are going to be done in 22 and 23. I kind of want to know what work we're going to get done. And I think that'll help all of us make the decision as to where we want to go. I personally, I think leaning towards option two, uh, borrow it, get the work done. And, uh, and then the thing is, if interest rates climb, any money that we have in reserves, we'll be collecting more interest than what we're paying. So it'll offset. Um, so are you able to explain what, you know, fairly high level, how many projects will get done with option one versus option two in the real short time, you know, within the next two years. Okay. I'm just going to take 30 seconds to uh, make, bring that document up so I can best speak to it. I'll be with you in uh, 30 seconds if you can. Does, uh, do we want to take a two minute uh, break while he uh, gets that information? Uh, is everybody okay with that? I'm good with that. I think this is. I think we need to have this in-depth discussion before we make the decision. So let's take a take a five-minute uh, break, and uh, I need to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so we'll see you in five minutes. Thank you, Lachlan. Can you share your screen to one of your uh, break slides, please? Good suggestion, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Yeah, I was just trying to find the slide. Thank you.
instant coffee. Gotta love it. I don't know if there's others around the table, but I, I'm back just to be sure. I believe we're still live, so I'll just uh, I'll wait for your call back into the meeting. Yeah, if everyone's back, we can get going. I think it's been five minutes. Councillor McDonnell. Lachlan, could you, would you mind exiting the consideration screen so I can see everybody? Perfect, thank you. So we'll just wait for Councillor McDonnell to get back to the table and then we can uh, uh, go back to the sharing your screen. Okay, we're all back. Thank you very much for that. Um, and I'll hand it back to you, Treasurer McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I have this coffee image still over here. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm just going to pull up the Excel sheet for, uh, for, for yourself and uh, everybody who's watching live. Let me know if you can see it because I, I do understand sometimes the screen changes. Um, so it should be up now. You should see um, the, the Excel it's spreadsheet. Sure. Yeah, we're there now, uh, uh, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. Great. So hide all this extra stuff so that you can see as much as you uh, as we can. And does this sizing work? I'm probably Zoom it in because you said kind of the new stuff. The mm -hmm. Next, I'll get. To, oh, I got. I covered my column. So, uh, I've labeled in light. I guess it's salmon. We'll call it. Um, those are your next two year projects and the amounts, and then 2024. So your three and four year projects. So this would be under plan number one, where we borrow 4.65 million dollars. What would we, oh, I should have highlighted that one? Sorry, I, I missed one. So Cemetery Road, North Branch Road, and Celtic Lane or Celtic Lane uh, will be in. Next two years, concession for Beaverbrook, uh, Hamlets, essentially, in addition, Heron and McGilvery. So these are all Hamlets. This is that's William Street. Um, here's Lancaster. Uh, that's um, Glendale subdivision. I'm not familiar with all streets. Hickory Street. Marlene, Marlene and Laura's. Okay, Bayview. Yep, Bayview and uh, South Lancaster. So there's there's quite a bit of streets to be done, Hamlet wise. Um, and then you have Purcell Road, and then you have Tio Town and Glenbrook included in this perfect in this plan. And we have the South Service Road coming later, and that's why in Plan Two you'll see a lot of those um, the ones that would be considered. So this is 2022, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll see a lot of the ones from six, seven, and eight moving into the um, more. So this would be borrowing 10.7 million and doing them. So uh, again, Cemetery Road, Celtic. You have Chapel in three to four years time, concession four, uh, concession four. And these are the distances. So when, when you see concession four twice, it's first line to SDG 26. So that's County Road 26, and then County Road 26 to third line road. So that would be doing some now and the other half later. Um, again, we're doing Hamlets, but you go to the bottom, we're moving up South Service Road a few years, uh, doing it in pieces. Um, similar plan here, like if you look at that 4.6 million, 4.6 million where I'm hovering with my mouse, it's these numbers that become more upfront uh, whenever you, um, with plan two and you can see here 10.689 million. So um, 
a wide suite of roads. Um, not all our roads, but a very good portion of them and more than we have ever done before. So that is, um, that is your, 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 your capital roads projects under option number one, and number two. If you'd like me to go any particular place, let me know, or if you'd like to go back to council, uh, let me know as well. Um, I, th I think that that's good. Uh, before you move away from this screen, I guess I'll, um, I said, I seen uh, Councillor McDonnell had his hand up. Uh, so okay. go ahead, Councillor McDonnell. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, can you go up to the uh, first page just at the bottom, Mr. McDonald, just uh, to see uh, what was the total cost of, of the uh, borrowing? Uh, this total cost was what, 13? Yep, total cost uh, 13. Whether we uh, whether we were to do it over uh, over two or um, the four the option one or option two, what was the total cost between the two? Just because I see you've got the cost of borrowing, et cetera, et cetera. What was the difference? So that's okay. twenty year, but the ten year to the ten year at the bottom page. Excuse me, cover. It costs eight hundred fifty thousand less to do the um uh, the, the ten point seven million versus the four point six five million. So this is thirteen thousand. I'm sorry, thirteen million. Sorry, and fifty thousand uh, for the four point six five million plan. And if you scroll down, uh, twelve million, about two hundred thousand. So the difference here is almost a million dollars in savings. Just yes, on, uh, just on inflation, we figure. That's exactly. Not Okay. No, I was just trying. Uh, it was moving quick, and I hadn't made note of that uh, number till we got down too late. So, no. Nope. Thank you for bringing that point forward, uh, Councillor McDonnell. Certainly puts it into light. Like it's 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 a larger number up front, but it's a lower number at, at the back end. Uh, Councillor Lang. Just to uh, add to that point, and uh, it, it's a little tough to see on the spreadsheet that uh, Lachlan was putting up because our computer screens are only so wide, but if you look at the, the full width of the page, if we go with the $4 million plan, some of the projects aren't finished to 2037, where if we go with the $10 million plan, they're all finished in five years, where the other way we're gonna be stretching it out to 2037, basically to get some of them done. And I can assure you that by 2037, there's going to be another list of things that need to be done. So, just to kind of help us, you know, think about uh, how this is going. And uh, Treasurer McDonald, I'd like to thank you for uh, what you'd said earlier about putting something together for us for next budget meeting about how we move forward in long term. Because that's one thing that's always annoyed me about uh, government in general is they, you know, they say we're going to run a deficit, we're going to borrow, we're going to do this. They never, ever show a plan to get out of that or that, you know, how it's going to, you know, they just add to it and, uh, they expect us to hope and believe that uh, someday it'll all be great. But uh, I think we need to have that plan in place because it looks like the reality is that the, the higher up governments are going to download a lot more stuff to us and it's going to be harder to get grants. Although I would still like to keep applying for them. If we get some, great. And then this can, you know, like this is like a line yeah. of credit. We don't have to use the whole thing. If we could get something, you know, maybe to do that second lift on, uh, on um, the, the South Service Road, you know, it's a million and a half dollars, just that one project. And it's, it'd be a shame not to do it because we know the road is starting to get a little rutted already. Yeah, starting, yeah. Yep. But, you know, if you can get a grant for something like that, it would change the outlook of this whole thing, you know. So I think we do need to keep applying, but we can't count on an upper government to, to give us money because it sounds like they're getting out of that game. Yeah, and I think the, the, the more money we have in our reserves, the more they overlook us. And that is sad, but I think that's the reality. I'll go to Councillor McDonnell, then to you, Councillor Jaworski. Yeah, just a quick comment uh, through you, Deputy Mayor. I guess on, on that, uh, my, my perfect example there would be the uh, second line, or the, the uh, South Service Road, the, the uh, road running from uh, essentially Bainesville, to, or uh, Curry Hill to Lancaster. That's one, uh, as Councillor Lang said, it, it, it's one that right now, if you drive down that road, I drove it this morning. It's a great road. It, it, it is, you can see the writing on it, but an extra, you know, an extra accident on the 401 between Lancaster and Curry Hill, all of a sudden that road takes a beating every time they direct traffic off the 401 and those loaded trucks go down it. It's just not built to carry that load. And I think putting it to 2037, we're going to have a, it's going to come up in that list ahead of that. Just in my opinion, it's, it, I think it's, 
in the long run, we'll be avoiding maybe uh, major projects that are going to come up and, and being able to and foregoing any opportunity to really put them over a multiple year project. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. And Councillor Jaworski. Thank you through you, um, Deputy Mayor. Um, I want to highlight, emphasize, reiterate, you know, about if we're moving, it sounds like we're moving ahead with the, the 10 year, uh, the 10 million uh, option. And so with that in mind, I think it is the most important thing is what is that plan? What is that plan to get us out of that line of credit, to close that line of credit, uh, or not to depend on it? And, and also, what does that plan look like in terms of taxation over that period? And my, and I, I'm not alone, I hear I'm not alone in terms of how do we build up that reserve so that we don't, this is not a, a normal thing of how we do things, that we, you know, we're able with our asset management plan to keep that, uh, to start, to, to go back to how we like it with our other items, you know, funding it through our own reserves. Um, and I, so, and I, and and the the one reason now I'm more comfortable with that 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 10 million, the 10 year, is how it does cost us less overall, but also it gives us more of that flexibility to start building reserves. And also, I do fear, you know, that there are other capital items that I think need to be discussed that aren't roads, that aren't bridges. You know, I think there is stuff that needs to be done at the arena. We've had meetings, you know, presentations on some upgrades there. And, you know, there, there needs to be room in the budget as well for those things. And so I think that the 10-year, 10, 10 million option gives us more of that flexibility so that we're not, so that we can stick to a plan, right? We need a bit of flexibility and we have to, we have, to have some margin to be able to, to stick to a, to a proper plan. So thank you. Okay, thank you for those comments. And I appreciate the robust discussion that we've had. Um, and again, I can't reiterate enough the, the thanks that I have for, uh, for staff and uh, Martin and uh, Sam for the extra work that you've done on this, this file. But it seems that there's a clear option that that's going to take us to where we want to go. And I'm thinking that it's uh, the option two uh, with the 10 year uh, debenture. Um, with again with a plan to get us out of that at the coming to us you know in the next little while can i get a show of a thumbs up if that's kind of where we're going okay and final comments to you councillor mcdonnell then uh treasurer mcdonald to kind of wrap this up this section up no, I guess I, I'll just comment as far as I know, I like the idea of borrowing less and using the, using what we have. But I think it, in, in this situation, that would be fine if we plan to go into another, another, uh, in, into another loan in 10 years. But at this point, I think if we want to get out of this, I think the only option is, is option two with a 10 year debenture and a plan to build those reserves that we currently have to a point where we can continue to do work on a cycle like this with a proper plan put in place. Working on a 12 year plan or a 13 year plan like Councillor Lang had alluded to, it, a lot of things change on a single road in 13 years. And next thing you know, we, we have to move it up and other roads are being pushed off. It's, I think we've got to get this, get the township roads infrastructure back to where it should be and where it maybe was at one point when we had more funding, but we've now got to get a little more creative in how we're going to do that, seeing as there is less funding overall. And a lot of things change as we get downloaded more things. Thank you. I uh, do want to make one more. I have a, a quick question and I'll, then I have a comment. Uh, Mr. McDonald, do you foresee uh, this, uh, this 10 million um, hindering the township for getting loans uh, in other areas. As you're well aware, we have a water and sewer issue that we're planning to, uh, you know, go forward with in Glen Walter in some shape or form. Um, and I mean, of course, we're going to be heavily relying on and we're going to heavily be lobbying the upper levels of government for funding. Do you foresee this 10.7 million if we decide to go forward with it? Do you see that hindering those projects or does the township still have the borrowing power? 
Well, that's a, that's an excellent question. I will I will clarify uh, on this November nineteenth meeting that. But from from my understanding, we have to use from Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. There's an annual annual repayment limit. It's called AR, ARL, and your own revenue. So that's our taxation. So at nine point seven or nine point five million. And I, I will clarify in case I'm wrong, but uh, the premise of it is, is there's a percentage, and I believe it's about 25% of your own source that can be a repayment limit. So that would be something to consider because if we do proceed with um, uh, say major uh, construction for their water uh, and water expansion, perhaps in Glen Walter, uh, that is something that has to be considered because with my, my, my junior understanding of that, let's say just rounded 10, paying back 2.5 million a year, might be our maximum that we can put towards a, an annual repayment. And if we're, we're pushed at 1.2 for the next 10 years, um, I mean, the, now water repayment should be spread over longer term because the asset life is longer. So that Correct. would bring down the annual, but it does, there bears consideration. So very good point. And I will make sure that I'm hundred uh, percent clear on that, what that will do to us in present dollars. And obviously as our budget grows over the future, um, it will be a lot more. And then also with consent, some consideration to the longer repayment schedule of water and wastewater assets. Okay. So now I have a question for Mrs. McDonald or Miss McDonald. Um, I understand you just have arrived. Um, my question to you is as, as if council approves this and we move forward, I guess my thoughts are like, if we get a good price on, granulars and aggregate and asphalt, you know, if we've got the line of credit, so could we be in a position to tender where like, this is what we're doing, but if you give us a good price, we could do this, this, and this, and maybe capitalize on a, on a, a volume discount. That is an excellent question, Deputy Mayor. And I think that I will, I'm not asking for an answer today, but yeah. it's just maybe something that we could consider writing in when we're doing our tendering, tendering with the counties and maybe like get the get the the culverting done ASAP and and the you know so that the the, the footings are solid. And then if we get a, a, a great uh Coco wants to come in and take, you know, uh do a you know, I'm just using cocoa where corn gravel wants all the work local, boom, we're ready to roll and we're gonna get a great, great, great price and we're gonna save some money. We can definitely work towards um, something like that. Love to hear it, thank you. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess that is the end of this uh, section. Uh, Mr. McDonald, I, did you want to have some final words? I know you spoke and then I spoke, but is there any final words that you want to say for us before we move on? Yes, I'd just like to set up next meeting, if I may, and if I can do that through the slides. Uh, so setting up the expectations for next meeting, um, you will receive your budget binders, uh, your budget presentation with the department graphs as per our usual first meetings, a list of all the capital projects, including those that don't have budget impacts or levy impacts because we have the reserves for them. Uh, to management, um, a reminder that I, I will be asking for what happened, a reflection of 2021 and what will happen in 2022 and some future ideas. Typically this takes uh, one page. And then I, I just want to thank everybody who's uh, tuned in and uh, to have a great weekend. And I'd be remiss because we're all wearing that poppy and Winston Churchill would say, and I'm a, a big proponent of Remembrance Day that like, it is a time when uh, so much has been owed to so few by so many. Uh, those lines, I'm, I'm happy to see the poppies across the board because I just like, it's, it's, it's a great sacrifice that was made and I, I'm, I'm proud of the tradition. And I, I just felt compelled to bring it up at the start and I, I just brought it up now. So uh, I appreciate everybody wearing their poppy and. Um, as our meeting will not happen until after Remembrance Day, I hope everybody takes their moment of silence next Thursday uh, to appreciate the uh, sacrifices by those individuals. Very good points, uh, Treasurer McDonald. I didn't realize that we were already at adjournment, so that's that's good stuff. Um, a final notes, um, uh, CA, Mr. Sierra, did you want to say some final notes before we close off, or you're you're okay? Just a reminder that we have closed session as well, so we won't be adjourning. 
Correct. Uh, I want to thank uh, Treasurer McDonald, staff, and and council for the great dialogue today, and we look forward to coming back on the nineteenth with uh, with a lot more details and a lot more wholesome discussion. So thank you to all. Okay, great. Uh, so once again, uh, sound like a broken record. Uh, I want to thank staff, uh, 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 Treasurer McDonald, uh, Councillor Lang, and Councillor McDonald for the extra work that you guys did. Uh, guys and gals did uh, on this file. I think they uh, went really well, and I'm certainly excited for uh, for the future of our infrastructure. And I think uh, I think we're on the right track. And I thank you for that. So thank you. So moving on to item number six, moved by Stephanie Jaworski, second by Martin Lang. Be it resolved that council convened to close session at 11.49 a.m. to discuss the following items under section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001. Two, a meeting or part of a meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered is. D, labor relations or employee negotiations, specifically hiring of staff. And K, a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on by the municipality specifically instructions for negotiations. All those in favor of the motion. Motion is carried, thank you very much. I wanna thank the public for tuning in for our special council meeting and we look forward to having you attend our uh, next meeting, which is in two weeks.